Hello and welcome. Another Sunday, another esports arena, Halo 5 4v4 for 1K on the line. On top of that, we got some of the best players to ever touch the sticks in Halo 5 coming, returning for this tournament. And Clutch, we're going to talk about them. Of course, I'm Shyway. I'm joined by Clutch once again. It's been a while, Clutch. I missed you. How you been, man? It's just been a week. Actually, it's, it's just been, been a, a, day. a day. It's, <laughs> been, it's been less than 24 hours since we casted something together. So, yeah. um, good times as always. Looking forward to some Halo 5 action today. 4v4 once again. Excited about that. I got to watch yeah. Baltimore beat the SmackDown Let's go. Uh, out of the Browns. And now we get to watch some Halo and watch some SmackDown in that regard. So couldn't be happier. Good day for sports. Good day for Halo as well. Uh, sounds good to me. Of course, we got a format for this tournament. Let's take a look at that before we go any farther here. In case you're new to the uh, to the Halo 5 Esports Arena 4v4, as you can see, our format and prizing is a 4v4 double elimination tournament. So you get two chances. If you lose, you go to the loser's bracket, and then, of course, you're out. And we got a $1,000 prize pool as well. Pretty good amount of cheddar to keep things interesting, to keep things competitive. I mentioned it a little bit earlier, Clutch, but we have some of the biggest names in Halo 5 in this tournament. We got Frosty returning. Apparently, he's playing with Renegade. As if Fung 4 wasn't strong enough, we got Frosty Renegade together on that team. We also have Boo Boo Doo Boo playing with with Saiyan playing with Arctic and Bound. So we have some some massive heavy, heavy hitter teams on top of all the other big teams that we're used to seeing week by week. Yeah, and that's kind of disappointing that Fung4 uh, makes like a roster change after their four-peat, right? You kind of want to see that team consistently stay together and, yeah. and defend that title and, and continue to just like see if, how far they can go with this. But if the opportunity to pick up Frosty kind of rears its head, I think you have to do it, I, even if you're like a dynasty of a team. Like Frosty's just, especially in Halo Five, just a yeah. generational talent that does not come along. So it's yeah. I, and I guess I guess you have to look at it like you either pick up Frosty and make it makes your team better, or you don't pick up Frosty and Frosty teams with other people and beats you. So uh, kind of a two headed sword right there that you have to deal with. I mean, the thing is, is it's not not necessarily, though, right? Like, Frosty, amazing player, very talented, expecting big things from him. But if he goes to another team, I still think we got a hot tournament. I'm, I, like you said, I'm a little disappointed that Renegade Frosty are together. Uh, though, we shouldn't even be talking about that because we got a match on screen just about to start up here. It's a Coliseum CTF match featuring Cutting Edge Esports versus v Virginia Velocity Esports. I'm going to read off these names real quick. We've got Dread Takedown, Magna, Requiem, and Finn going up against Depths, Dolo, Minx, and Nikolai. So a lot of good players to kick off our day today through our uh, coliseum ctf wes i'll let you kick it off yeah in my opinion best halo 5 game type to start this Let's tournament go. off couldn't ask for a better a map mo combination here love seeing some familiar names we have uh i mean velocity esports competed last week and they, i believe they won the first series and then we have on the other side, we have Dolo, Noir, Minx, Nikolai. Some people that typically go pretty far in these tournaments as well. So right. looking forward to seeing like both these guys clash. And whichever team loses, this is going to be really upset because they're used to making it further in this bracket, right? So right away, we have a, a, a hotly contested series. So that's always a good start. Oh yeah. Even though this is our first match of the day, nobody is a slouch in this in this match, in this uh, playlist. These are people that I'm used to seeing online that just typically go off uh, online. They're in the you know the Onyx high, uh, sorry, high Onyx low champion kind of uh, threshold. So expect some big things from these players just kicking things off today. Requiem gonna get a back smack as well. Actually just a, a regular melee kill. He's looking for a double here maybe as well. Nice little nade on the pyramid to back that player down. Another one top catwalk. He's gonna have to back off. His teammate can hopefully pick that up. But a flag's already on the board it snuck by me in the first minute of the game we got a 1-0 start yeah before i could play any glass groundwork for this series the flag got pulled and then by the time you got an opportunity to speak the flag got capped shy way so <laughs> oh, no. huge job by cutting e as esports there to start this game off uh just unbelievably efficiently and picking up that first cap even with the first kills going in so uh, that bodes well for the future if they're able to continue that pace but we do have nikolai with his no scopes with the snipe to try and crawl his team back into this game. And it's plays like that that are gonna need to be made. Unfortunately, he's only able to get that one kill before getting taken down. And now with that snipe, it's gonna land in the hands of his teammate. It's gonna be Del Noir. 
Well, at least Dolo managed to pick it up there because it was an unfortunate spot for Nikolai to die underneath the red base, but it looks like he's, uh, he's doing a pretty good job with it so far. Gonna try to live up here. He's got two players on him in red base. I would like to see him play the elbow a little more carefully, carefully there and just uh, wait for his opportunity to go for a real guaranteed flag pull because the flag's been pulled on the other side of the map. You can see there's that blue flag return. I don't think it's gotten too far. Uh, we also have a red flag out on the silver, so uh, a hell of a battle gonna take place here on the silver. Yeah, absolutely. A battle for these new sets of rockets, and it does look like Cutting Edge was able to get that set of rockets, but are they able to do any damage with them? It's difficult to tell. Uh, the, but the flag is pulled, right? The flag is right now being ran to their base while all of this is going on, while everyone's trying to worry about getting set up for rockets. Cutting Edge Esports has managed to run this flag all the way back to the base. Yeah, great work by Cutting Edge. That puts them up 2-0 in the scoreline. Things looking pretty easy for these guys so far. And they're trying to pull out the super slides as well. Not quite hitting it right there, but he will make his way over to Elbow for maybe a sneaky play on Rockets. Though he doesn't see him. He's now trapped in, in a rock and a hard place here on the Elbow. He's going to have to try to live up, wait for his teammates to help him out. Unfortunately, he can't. But we have another flagpole coming in. And that's going to go out the window. We'll see if they can get anywhere with it. Uh, I mean, this could very well end the game if they're not able to get the return. It does look like a player is able to hop right on it and pick that return up. And with that, they're going to be able to buy themselves a little bit more time in order to try and muster a comeback here in game one. But already down 2-0, fairly early in the game still. Um, it's going to take a lot for Virginia Velocity Esports to, to get back in this game. Yeah, they're gonna have to start pulling the flag and thankfully I think they've done just that we got a red flag pulled That's Minx holding it. She'll go silver to silver. Maybe take it to window. That's just about guaranteed So that's a good toss for Minx right there. If they can grab the flag pull it in That Damn. should be a 2-1 but the pressure coming in right now as they try to get that return good back smack from depths as well Just to keep things back. I think he might have guaranteed him some wait what? What happened in the window? Nobody was looking at the flag and they returned it for free. That's not what you want to see. Bit of a blunder on the side of blue there. Yeah, just paying attention to the kill feed. Finn actually sniped three people. The flag, two of the flag players and then the third player that was trying to get his way to there, to the flag in order to get the, the third touch, but then doing a phenomenal job of shutting that flag run down himself. And now Requiem has this new set of rockets and with it, Cutting Edge Esports could potentially end this game. He does go down, but I believe Cutting Edge Esports is in position to continue to pick those rockets up. Yeah, we'll see who grabs those. In the meantime, Thim's get, Finn is going to double back to the red elbow just to make sure he gets that kill, and he does. It's a good defensive kill, but of course he's down as well. The pressure is on from Nick Cly and team right now in the cave. I like these shots from Nick Cly. That's a double from him. Tosses a nade before dying, but no dice with that one. It looks like the enemy team, the red team, Magna, is going to push up and try to win this fight here in a bit of a double team situation. He'll go down for now. So we got a bit of back and forth here. Nobody really getting a flagpole just yet. Yeah, we kind of we saw some quick objective work earlier in this game, and now it's kind of turned into a stalemate. It looks like both teams have got their footing, but still, cutting edge esports has built themselves such a magnificent lead and such a, a, a huge lead to where I'm not sure if Virginia Velocity Esports is gonna be able to like come back in this game. We see cutting edge esports actually is able to get the return there, and that's gonna be another opportunity for Virginia down the drain. So far, we've seen it time and time again. Virginia Velocity Esports pulling flags, managing to get that flag past that 50-yard line, but for some reason, they can't just clutch it up and get it in the, uh, you know, the actual flag pedestal. And because of that, it's looking kind of rough for them. They're running out of time to do so. They still have at least six minutes, 30 seconds, but that flag's out. It's down in the trench. Finn spinning around in circles. Not sure where that player is. He will go down. We might actually have an opportunity for Velocity once again. Let's see what they can do with it. Absolutely, and this would be a huge cap because getting this under their belt, they have plenty of time right now in order to come back just down one. But it looks like Cutting Edge Esports has multiple players able to get the kill and get the return right there, and that's such an important Ooh. return for them. Like I said, to just continue to play with this two cap lead would mean unbelievable things, but they have the third cap in mind. They have multiple kills over in the cave area that pull the flag. Now Requiem's going to anchor this okay. flag run. And let's see what he's able to do here. He is behind enemy lines, but nades come in and he gets taken out. I believe this is going to be a dead flag. Yeah, Requiem going for a bit of a 50-50 there. He tried to launch the rockets off the platform and deny them for the enemy team, but he missed the stick entirely. So in the end, he just wasted time. and gave up the rockets and the flag capture. At least Thin has snipe. And Thin's putting it to work. He's got a headshot so far. He'll move over to Elbow, maybe start to anchor his team here and we'll see if he can get himself another opportunity but i like this play from Finn. he's gonna move up to elbow nice headshot from him as well he'll take the brain off of depth 
and he's looking for more blood. That's a double. Maybe we'll convert it into a triple here. He knows he wants that flag, and he won't waste any time picking it up. We might have our final run here as he takes it through Snipe's side. I love that selfless play by Thin, right? He picks up a quick two kills with the Snipe, and then he immediately is going to run the flag. He's not going to try and go for the triple, not going to go for the clip, knowing that he's on broadcast, getting commentated. Unfortunately, it does look like Virginia Velocity Esports actually just swooped in and got the return and pulled the flag of their own. But heads up play by Thin, and that's a veteran play by him. If he's playing like that, making those decisions, he's going to be right more times than not, and successful more times than Ooh. not. He just ate a couple nades right there. He could survive in the cave. And it looks like that flag is it still out. I think the flag might have returned. So uh, it was returned. Virginia Velocity trying and trying once again, but still unable to succeed with these flag poles. They will push up. You got Nikolai pushing up top cat. He's got two teammates on snipe side, but he doubles back for this window kill and doesn't quite manage to get it. That player being a pest in the blue base. And we'll see if he actually decides to pull that flag. I like this play from Nikolai, though. Make sure to, you know, dot the I's, cross the T's here as his teammate runs the flag. He's got the defense from the window as well but that flag it looks like it might be dead here you got a red player on it looking to return it yeah it's not quite returned just yet that player forced off by a few nades we're gonna see if Nikolai is able to make a play here he does spot a player over towards this fountain and he does get him weak and a nice finish Ooh. by him that's two dead Mings picks up a kill as well the flag is returned though so they're gonna have to go all the way back into the enemy base to pull that one and that's just another great return we're seeing out of Cutting Edge Esports. We've seen time after time, it feels like Virginia Velocity Esports is actually keeping up with the Slays at this point. They're just not being able to get the return. They're trying to get past this last length right here. You got Magna coming in for the defense. I think they might have killed everybody, and it's now an elbow spawn. They can't get there fast enough. That should be another return for Red, and just an unfortunate turn of events for Virginia Velocity, who have tried so many times at this point to get one flag through. But looks like we might have a potential counter cap. He's going to send it through Snipe. Magna with the defense, but you got two players in the base for the cutoff. So this one might be dead, too. We'll see what that, uh, Virginia Velocity can do to stop it. Flies getting pulled everywhere, returns coming in shortly after, everywhere. And with that, the game remains 2-0. Only three minutes left. Vir Virginia Velocity Esports needs to figure it out, and they need to do it quickly if they want to come back in game one. I'm starting to think that both teams kind of need to figure it out here. There's a lack of efficiency on these flag poles and flag runs. Both sides, Cutting Edge, Virginia Velocity, have, have pulled many flags and failed many attempts, though Cutting Edge does have that advantage. They got the 2-0. They're sitting pretty. Time is becoming a factor as well, and Requiem has a sniper with a Eight shots, he'll miss the first one, get a duck down here, try to live up. This is a very dangerous part of the map to survive. He'll put the snipe down. That's down in the window. We'll see if you can grab it thin right now. Gonna live up. The pressure's on from Virginia, Virginia Velocity, though, as they fly through the window. We might have another flagpole. Let's see if they can finally get this one in. And that could be a big blunder by thin there, not to be able to finish that one shot kill because now the flag is pulled and now the flag is almost across the map. It looks like it may have gotten tossed and stuck on cutting edge towards side, though, and it's up to the rest of the team to figure it out, but they're unable to do so. And with that, the return's gonna come in shortly and Madness Reverum once again in position to hop on it and make sure that the run does not continue. A huge return with under two minutes, still up 2-0. I love cutting edge of the esports ability to play defense in these situations. It's time after time that they've been able to do so and keep this lead that they've built early on. Dread takedown on your screen. He can talk the talk, but can he walk? The walk, we're gonna find out here. He's gonna look over to Cave. Looks like players are spawning in the back of the base. I love this push from Red. You got players pushing him on all sides, but they've left the elbow open now, and that's gonna start to pressure him. I like the Dreads playing this patiently. He does drop down the bottom base. He's gonna start to get pushed up here as he tries to stay up. He's got one teammate with him. They can work together to hopefully capitalize here and just taking his time. He will get that melee and a little bit of a teabag. Why not? Give him the business. He'll back down for now, and he's gonna have to stay up see if they can keep up this pressure but time is now a huge factor just over a minute remaining they might not even need to cap another one yeah absolutely i don't think they have any intention of actually pulling another flag right i think if i'm on cutting edge esports i'm more worried and more concerned about playing good defense and and focusing on map control you have no reason to be focusing on the objective the 2-0 lead is enough it would take almost a miracle for virginia velocity esports to to even get two caps at this point having not been able to get one in the first 14 minutes and and that's what they're doing right you see take down you see cerebrum you see requiem they all pick up kills but nobody's really sprinting towards the flag we'll see if requiem decides to pull this i'm not sure about this as a player does end up giving his life but what he is doing is he's forcing the enemy team to come back to their base and play defense and when doing that they're not able to play offense and pull the fights that they need in order to come back in this game with just under 30 seconds
at this point, I'd say it's pretty much impossible. Even a couple perfect shots and flag runs aren't really going to get you to win this game or cap two before that 20 seconds is up. Of course, 15 left here. They're just going to pad the stats. Magna looking cross map with this laser of a rifle. This carbine just melts. You've got to make sure to pick it up. It looks like this final 10 seconds is a nice, confident win for the side of Cutting Edge Esports. Clutch, I'm used to watching 3-0 after 3-0 in the first game, uh, in the first match of the day, but so far this has been been pretty neck and neck despite, the, you know, of course there's a win, 2-0, they started strong, but it was back and forth for the rest of the game after those first two flag caps. Yeah, I honestly thought it was going to be a 3-0, like one of those quick ones that we typically right. see at the start of these broadcasts, but then... All of a sudden, Virginia Velocity Esports found their footing and they started playing good defense. They started getting some flag pulls. An overkill came out of which player? Was that Magnum that ended up picking up that overkill? I'm looking for it. Let me see. It is uh, Magnum. It is Magna. Yeah. Good yeah. stuff from Magnum. Uh, sorry. Lost my train of thought when I saw the medals, um, as most players do. Right? Weep. <laughs> yeah. Um, but. Yeah, I thought for sure we were about to see one of those very, very fast Coliseum flag games that we almost, it feels like we almost see every time yeah. uh, just at the start of the broadcast, right? But there was a largely contested battle throughout those games. And if, I want to say if Cutting Edge Esports doesn't pick up those two flags earlier on, like, that'd probably still be in overtime right now tied 0-0 zero, zero, because Maybe. both teams were playing phenomenal defense, right? Um, yeah, that might have changed the way that they were playing throughout the rest of the game, sure. uh, having that lead, but... I do think that both these teams are are fairly even. So going into game two, I think that I can't favor either team. I don't know about you. Look at the slays, though. If you look at the slays, it's dramatically in the favor of red. 35, 25, 28, 23 from the side of uh, Chosen Legacy, where the you know blue team, you know significantly less kills, significantly less similar damage, maybe, but just less kills, which makes me think that you know not only is uh, Chosen Legacy, you know, they did a great job with that first game, but maybe they're not too objective efficient. It seems like you know all four of them are just slaying constantly, which will be great in a slayer, but later on in the tournament, they, they got to be objective efficient. It's not going to work out if they keep yeah, playing. Yeah, like forget everything I said. Dramatic. Looking at those. Yeah, that's slaves. insane and, and after watching a Poor little bit of Nikolai it wasn't like he was playing poorly when it was on his screen so seeing an 11 and 26 performances is Rough. actually like surprising no yeah. because when it was on a screen I was like yeah he's shooting fairly solid he even picked up a kill like so 31 from Dolo too like these are they are getting slayed hard so it, it just it's crazy that the game went to time like it did yeah uh, and Madden Cerebrum obviously after taking a look at the stats having a <laughs> monstrous performance in game one we'll see if he's able to continue that into game two and close this series out well speaking of slays we got a plaza slayer coming up next so this is probably the perfect game type for the uh, chosen legacy but it's not over virginia velocity esports there's some great players on this roster i'm hoping they can bounce back and take advantage of things like the sniper rifle the camo the light rifle a lot to pay attention to on this map as we jump into our plaza slayer yeah plaza slayer the name of the game we have an overshield top middle. We have a snipe on the map. We're going to see if, if Finn's able to pick that up. <coughs> Sorry, I had to sneeze and go off with it. <laughs> or are we going to see Virginia Velocity Esports get an opportunity to bring this series back and tie it up one to one? Both We're going to hop on board him. with Finn to start off. You said it. Finn on our screens here doesn't decide to pick. Oh, wait, he's got that combo, and that will come in handy depending on who picks up that OS, of course. But the combo is such a powerful weapon in general. It just tracks around walls, though. Yes. Oh, somebody's got the sniper. Somebody's got the OS. It's dread with the OS. We'll see what he can do with it. They already got three slays. That should be a full four dead right here. If he wins this fight, he does go in one shot. But he's got four snipe bullets in the chamber, and we'll see if he can put it to good use here as he makes his way back into nest. Yeah, it's take down with the body disrespect and I'm sure there's some kind of drama going between him and that other player, but there's a lot of drama going on in the industry scene nowadays, I feel like, and, and everybody's got beef with everybody. So what better way to handle it than in the tournament and through gameplay, I would say. So take down with the sniper. We're going to see if he's able to hit any shots. It's going to be taken down from a player above him, and you're going to want to put the reticle on that player and not try and avoid him that way. Take down, but we'll see how punished 
Virginia Velocity Esports is able to influence now that they have the snipe in their hands. Nikolai, you have an opportunity here to redeem yourself after a poor game one performance. What do you got? He's got one shot, one opportunity, and it looks like he missed it, unfortunately. He's going to have to back down. He's taking a lot of damage in the process here. He's also getting pushed from Nest as well. I don't know if he's aware of it just yet. That might come to bite him, but he does have teammates with the cross here, so this might actually turn into a sneaky flank from the Clyde. Shots coming in from him. He'll knock that teammate, that player, one shot. He's going to jump up to S4. I like this movement from Decly. He should be able to cut off this player coming in from posters as well. We'll see if he catches him, but that player just being a, a bit of a nuisance right here, standing on the box. Oh, but he does go down. That's a good kill right there. Despite that, a nice close game and a start here, 9 to 11. Yeah, but I expect this game to be highly contested, and right now it, it, it felt like cutting edge esports could potentially run away with it, but Virginia Velocity was able to kind of catch that and, and hold the momentum that they were going with uh, at least earlier on in this game than they were last game. Still, a four kill lead, and it could start to build as we see map control go in the favor of cutting edge esports here if a few kills go in their favor. OS is up. Somebody's got to grab it here. If Red grabs it, that could be a massive momentum swing in their favor. And I think they got it. You got the pressure coming in from Dread takedown. He's got a teammate there for the cutoff. So you can see the teamwork coming in as Dread drops down into market here to stay alive. Those players are up in the yard. And it looks like they're going to be pinched in just a second. Dread opting to back off for now. That player just hanging on the wall, by the way. Look at that dead body. Kind of love it. It uh, always distracts me whenever I see that. But uh, looks like Dread will get taken down Thin with a little bit of OS left here. We'll see what he can do with it. Yeah, this is a, a big opportunity for Thin. There are going to be two players right in front of him. And he's unable to pick up either one either one of them right there. Great teamwork out of Virginia Velocity <gasps> Esports to, to be able to take down the overshield player there. Looks like Thin got a little bit lost in in uh in the chaos there so he got a player to no shield but then was unable to finish him after he lost track of him for just a second that's good for virginia velocity because that lead has not extended too far just yet just a five kill difference now four kill between these teams now Demp's gonna try to push up the bottom lift here doesn't spot that player just yet hopefully sees him around the corner that's a good melee to get the first kill we'll back off for now i'm not sure who grabs snipe but of course that's going to be so important in getting a couple more kills here keeping things close yet again though considering how just lopsided the slays were in that coliseum game it's good to see things are close here and i'm just curious to see how it all goes down when that new camo or os comes up yeah absolutely yeah, i thought this game was for sure going to blow out of yeah. the water uh, with that overkill pickup, but Virginia Velocity Esports doing a phenomenal job right now staying in it. Are they going to be able to pick up this kill? Requiem with two huge wins right there in a 1v2 oh. situation, and those are the things that cannot happen if you want to turn this into a game three. Great job by Requiem. Cutting edge esports is going to extend the lead to five. Thin has the snipe. We've already seen him do so much work with it throughout game one, and now he's in a perfect opportunity to show us what he can do on plus. Yeah, this is a great setup from Finn here. One of the best places to have the snipe on Plaza is up on glass. You can see his teammates all around him taking some of the aggro as well as they try to apply pressure. And he just blains Minx right there. That's two dead. One player left top dead. Going to try to go for the OS. And honestly, a good burn from that player. But that's a nice double from Finn as that lead extends farther and farther. We're looking at a six kill difference right now as Finn just continues to play this anchor role onto the lift here. That player will live up. Lucky for them. Yeah, uh, great burn, I would say, by Virginia Velocity Esports, but you almost need that overshoot to come back with this seven kill, eight kill now deficit, Ooh. nine kill now deficit, right? You need these power-ups and power weapons in your favor if you want to try and win the game. Burning them is not enough of a solution to the problem at hand. Finn is now on a rampage with about four or five straight snipes. I love what we're seeing out of Thin. Consistency with this weapon is key if he wants this team to make it far in this tournament, and that's exactly what he's able to do here in, in this series. Thin looking like the flank master in this game as well. He flanked to get the snipe. He just flanked Minx right there on light rifle, and he's doing it again. He's trying to flank through yard from below. He'll get some shots in the depths, try to win this fight, but he does go down. That's a big win right there, but we still are looking at about a nine kill difference right here. The blue team's gonna have to do something, and they're gonna have to do it soon before we hit that 40 kill mark, because it gets to that point where it's just almost unwinnable when these players start getting trades. We're gonna see it in the hotel here. Oh. What a choke from Dread, but he does get the kill. A little scary for a second here, and it looks like he might get traded out, but he's living for now. Dredge is going to try to live up. He's getting pressure from the Clyde. The Clyde can't seem to land the kill shot. The teammate comes in. This is the type of bait and switching that you need if you want to hold on to that lead. And he does end up trading his life right there with multiple teammates around him. But at this point, you can afford to trade your life, right? You're up 12 kills. Yep. You're just trying to get the 50 before the other team in, in, a, uh, in some kind of way, I would say. So 
at least for him, trading in this situation, phenomenal. Cerebrum also gets, Magnus Cerebrum also gets a nice little trade there. He wins his one-on-one, -on -one, then gets taken oh. down, and that's all it's going to take to get to 50 when you're up, and you've built this lead so comfortably like this here in Game 2. Nice headshot, though, from Depths. The sniper has changed hands. The OS is coming up, and finally, Blue Team actually grabs it. So for Virginia Velocity with an opportunity here. They got four shots in snipe. They got OS. The pressure's coming in on Hotel. That should be a nice free kill on Hotel, and it is. Depths going to try to stay alive, but he doesn't. A bit of a blunder right there, and Wes, you said it. All they need are trades at this point, and they will win the game. We're still looking at a 12-kill difference, and Dolo, the last person left alive here, already charging up ahead of his team. Yeah, interesting challenge there by Dolo. I don't think he was ever going to get that kill, but he is going to lose his overshield during that fight, right? He has a little bit of it right now as he pushes in the yard. The spot takes down here, takes him down, but his teammates trade it out. It's an eight kill game, nine kill back. It feels like every time Virginia Velocity Esports makes an inch or tries to get up, like to muster this comeback at all, they're unable to, right? Cutting Edge Esports has had an answer every single time. They've been able to respond with a kill every time a kill goes against them. And with that, the 45 to 35 score, 34 score line is the result. Definitely seems like they get two kills and they lose three teammates in the process here. And that's not the kind of trade that you want to see. Now 46, 47, three kills left remaining. They're just going to clean up the rest of the pieces here. I don't see any hope for G Virginia Velocity making any kind of a comeback here. That's 48, now 49, one more. We'll seal this out and close our series. We'll see who the victim is. Reckon with some nice stabilized shots across the map here. And there it is, the victory, a confident 50 to 34 on the side of cutting edge. That's a 2-0 series to start our Sunday. Yeah. And an impressive performance, I would say, uh, by Thin specifically as an individual, but the entire team played well. I mean, Requiem right. uh, leading the team in kills 16 and 8 with 8 assists to match it. And, and when you're going double positive in a Slayer, typically you're probably winning about 90% of those Slayers if you're able to go double positive as an individual. You got Thin following suit with the 14 and 8 performance right behind him. So both those players playing at such a high level and Magnum Cerebrum plays well in game one, which allows them to advance in this series 2-0. Thin with the uh, the hat trick medal, getting three sniper headshots in a row there. And I mean, we got to see it on screen. He also has the back smack as well, the protector. So Thin doing a lot of good, good work, uh, just flanking through, taking, uh, dismantling the opposition. Uh, a bit unfortunate for our blue team here for uh, for Virginia Velocity, because I know there are a lot of talented players on that roster. Uh, of course, uh, Dolo, Depps, Nikolai, Minx, they will lose this series, but it's a double elimination bracket, so this team still has a shot through losers. They're going to have to fight hard, though, because it, the competition only gets only gets more difficult from here. It just really ramps up from here. Wes, we talked a little bit about some of the teams to expect in this tournament, and I mean, if this is game one, I'm, I'm excited to see what we got coming forward uh, for the rest of the Sunday of course, we're not going to get there until we finish our break, though. So let's take a quick break. We'll come right back. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to our esports arena, Halo 5 4 before. Of course, we got more Halo 5 action coming up. And it looks like we're going to stay with the winner's bracket. This is winner's round four now. So we're sticking with Dread Take Takedown's uh, chosen legacy team. But they're going up against a heavy hitter. They're going up against Liga Del Mal in clutch. Liga has upgraded this time around. They now have tapping buttons on their team. So they've only gotten stronger. Yeah, absolutely. Tapping buttons is a force when it comes to Halo 5, right? I see Pelu... Uh, join up. So that's going to be Atso, Drift, and Pelu, the the players yep. that are joining them. Uh, these guys are always good. Tapping's just going to raise the bar for them, I think, and raise that ceiling and their potential. Uh, typically, we see them make it fairly far in the bracket. So very excited to see them add tapping to their to their squad and see what what kind of new heights that that can bring them. Yeah. As long as tapping is put into work to in order to kind of uh, be consistently at the level we know he can play as a, at an individual stake. Definitely expecting that from tapping. They this team has been around that top four threshold, so definitely one of the heavy hitters. And I mentioned last series that that chosen legacy. It seemed like they were a little inefficient with their objective, right? Because they slayed so much in call a CTF, and the game went to time. They didn't quite get three caps. So I'm wondering if this is the matchup where it really comes to bite them, because you've got a team that that probably is very objective efficient. They have been in the past four weeks, so could be kind of tough for them. Uh, a new update, by the way, the format has changed this time around. So now we're getting set game types for each round right now we're in round four so we're going to be looking at strongholds on the rig followed by slayer on truth and then capture the flag on coliseum so we don't have the same kind of picking counter picking or whatever whatever we had before where we got like two slayers or two strongholds in a row we're actually getting set game types everybody plays what's listed for each round yeah and that's always good i think that that uh kind of forces uh players to play outside of their comfortable like their comfort zones right you want to yeah you got to be good at everything now. You can't just be good at like selected game types that you kind of choose and the directional exactly. choice of that. Uh, and and it's a it's a wider spread of variety for us as casters as well. So we see we see uh, different game types, different maps, every map pool and every series. So very excited well, for that to also take place. We're going to be stop hopping on board with rigs, strongholds. I'll let you start this one off, shall we? Uh, very excited yeah. to see this. Um, uh, we get them all team perform this weekend now. Let's get it. We're starting off with Requiem, though. So we're sticking with Chosen Leg Legacy off the rip here. And we'll see what he can do to sneak his way under for the camo. But the camo's already been grabbed. That's a quick play there coming out from that player on Liga. He's going to sneak away with that camo. Let's get on board with that camo player. Finn's got the shoddy in the meantime. Finn's going to have to guard that with his life, but he can't because that's a shoddy and a camo in the hands of that Liga Demal player. First 15 seconds, all four dead for cutting edge esports. This is a completely different piece of a team that they're going to have to play in Liga Del Mall, right? Atso already hopping in the stronghold picking up a kill with this camo scatter shot and he's found this lethal combination as he spots two more players desperating trying to stop him from capturing that they do get the kill but not without trading their lives and it's going to be two going in into the hands of Liga Del Mal early on here with a nine point lead in the first minute Still a big kill, though. I think it does give them the opportunity to cap basement, and they did. Pelu, in the meantime, going to try to finish off this player in underpass, and he does. They still got two caps on the board. Going to fly up on this guy in the, in the window, and he wins that fight, too. Pelu just uh, hitting all his shots right now, and, I mean, that's going to be scary for Chosen Legacy. They know that they're spawning in bunker as well, and he's already starting to light him up. We'll see if his team joins him in the fray here. Yeah, Pelu is kind of the question mark for me when it comes to Liga Del Mal. Like, how well can he play? Can he keep up? with tapping drift and that so because i've seen very high ceilings from all three of those play players i think Pelu is the one that i haven't seen play at that high of level he's already started off game one hot in the series and if he's able to play very well today he's going to go very far because i think he's surrounded himself with some very strong players and, and their teamwork as we know is only continuing to build as they continue to play together and and, and build chemistry uh throughout the grind that is uh their halo 5 career so very excited to see him play at a high level, but now we're on board with tapping buttons, someone we're all too familiar with his skill and what he brings to the table when it comes to Halo 5. I was about to say thank you, Observer, who switched over to tapping buttons. Can't wait to see what this guy puts together, and hopefully he gets that rail, but it looks like he will opt to help with Nest first. He's got it all clear. Should be a nice free rail gun for him and the camo coming up as well. It looks like his teammate might be grabbing that, so all the resources on the map. Going up the red team right now as these players spawn in Bunker, desperately trying to grab that BR base, but tapping a bit of an unfortunate situation for him. He messes up his movement, dies with the railgun. Atso has the camo, though, and he's coming in to make plays. That should be a nice double. He can grab Finn here, who's just being pesky in the BR base. Kill the man! Finally, he gets him. Atso will live up, try to cap this BR base. 
Yeah, not the, not the prettiest, most smooth still right there, but Anto got the job done nonetheless. And with that, he's going to get that stronghold and control back in the favor of Liga Del Mall, right? They're going to look to push on this bottom basement hill, and I love this play. He's going to find the camo scatter shot once again, and he's going to perform uh, the same situation that he kind of had earlier, right? And immediately picking up a camo scatter shot. This combination on this map should be illegal because it's so powerful, right? How much damage have you always seen players do whenever they get the camo and the scatter shot paired together? It's definitely uh, on borderline stupid on how powerful it can be, but Atso will lose the camo for now, and he dies with the shoddy in the, the short haul there. Dread Takedown has the rail as well, so that could be a shoddy rail control on the side of blue here, and hopefully an opportunity to grab some captures, but Dread needs to hit this shot. He backs off, and that player just kind of playing with him around that corner, forcing him to charge up and switch weapons, but finally he does get the kill. He's got his teammate pushing in through basement side. they got to work together and help his teammate here. He is one shot. His teammate's alone in basement, and he might lose that fight. Dread Takedown right now. Kind of not sure where to put his efforts. His teammate's just capping solo for free, and I, I'm surprised. Yeah, and now he oh joined. Him. I don't know God. about this play, Dread. You sat there in the middle for so long, and then they were too late to get to basement before the reset. Did you see how close that was to going? Oh, so close. I mean, and, and at, at one point, you've got to say, Dread, you got to be quicker to, in order to get over there and help your team, like you were saying, but... At the end of the day, it felt like he was still going to be able to make the play in time, and it just wasn't there for him. But 67 to 6 is the current scoreline, and that's going to result in a blowout. We just saw Cutting Edge Esports win pretty handedly uh, in a 2 0 series coming into this one. But we get down Mall showing what it takes to advance in this bracket Ooh. further through winner's side. Atso doing a good job. It's the camo, it's the scatter shot, it's Atso. We've seen it. All before we've seen the damage that he can do we're just gonna sit back and watch the show at this point it's almost as if the weapons in the camo just come to him he doesn't have to do anything for it because this is round three from atso with the shoddy and the camo he does get his first kill right there he will move on to the br base and like you said it's a bit of a blowout we're hitting that 80 point mark i talked about objective efficiency being so so crucial and it looks like it's definitely fighting now he does go down though Atso unfortunately getting taken down that is a trip cap though they're gonna try to cap basement in the meantime drift will push up with his team to stop it yeah, they've stopped the trip cap, but that's not enough right now. Ness is a priority for Cutting Edge Esports. They are, two players are taken down as they make their way towards Ness. And with that, Liga Del Mall is going to look to try and close this game very early on. That's going to be a third player going down. All of Cutting Edge Esports spawning back towards the cat shot scatter shot towards the catwalk and they're not going to be able to make their way across the map they have taken br base for just a half a second but it's immediately re recovered in and back in their favor basement now left wide open for tapping buttons to hop in clutch i, I like the idea of a catter shot in the game it's just uh, like a, a cat <laughs> kitten launcher fires cats across the map take them down they'll, they'll probably you know grab onto your face and start uh, scratching so who knows it could be a pretty devastating power weapon either way we're getting down to the end of this game here uh, like you said a bit of a blowout 98 and counting tapping will win that fight confidently great from him some great things from tapping as we expect but there's the final point in a victory that's a 1-0 for Liga Del Mal a brand new team at this point with tapping buttons on it yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of the performance I expected to see out of Liga Del Mall early in this series. Uh, just, we already knew Liga Del Mall was going to probably win the series without tapping buttons. But with the addition, you expect this series to be heavily in their favor. And that's exactly the performance we see here in game one. I want to see this team reach new heights in these tournaments. I want to see them go farther than they've ever gone before, given the opportunity to get tapping uh, on their team this weekend. And this is a great start. This is the first step into doing so. You gotta love Adso's scoreline. Uh, three camos and three shotties will put you at a, a pretty positive scoreline. That's a 17 and eight from Adso. The most damage on the team as well, 2,567. In the meantime, on blue, it looks like they did have a disadvantage in the side of Slays. Uh, everyone going negative on uh, Chosen Legacy. So kind of a rough go for that team. We will be jumping into a Truth Slayer with the next map. And uh, slaying, of course, the name of the game here. All Both these teams are gonna have to bring their best slaying prowess. And I know Dread Takedown's team has it, but this is Liga Del Mal, an improved Liga Del Mal we're talking about here. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, for them to be able to keep up with the Slays is going to be near impossible with the amount of individual skill we see out of, out of Liga Del Mal. Liga Del Mal is just like such a practice tried and true team. Yeah. Um, as, as cutting edge esports might be on the come up, they still have so much further to go in order to get into that. Um, it's a 4v5, by the way, Clutch. It looks like you're on this one. So uh, better but, pick up the controller. Take them down. Change. You're on. You're on. Uh, you're on Liga. So it's not even oh, fair. Oh well, that's man. a win. 
Yeah, they got to put you on the blue team. See how that one goes. So we are going to reset this clutch is uh, unfortunately in here. We're going to switch over to uh, Observer and uh, and make sure we get that game underway in just a second. I mean, I'd love to play. Uh, if you want to sub me in, by the way, guys, maybe uh, throw, throw me in a, a later bracket match. Hopefully I don't uh, screw over any of these teams. <laughs> I'm not even sure I'd be enough to help cutting edge esports out here in this situation. Yeah. I'm not sure. Even in a 5v4, if we'd have what it takes to take out Liga Dumb all the way they're playing, I'm pretty confident in my own skill. But what I saw out of uh, what I saw out of Cutting Edge Esports there uh, is not something that I would want to put myself through uh, against these guys. <laughs> and, and that's me saying it bluntly, but also nicely. Yeah. So um, they're going to need to step it up, and they got to do it now if they want to continue a winner's record run, right? They want to take this to a game three. Watch. I'm not sure they're capable of doing with the way Liga Del Mall is currently playing. Sometimes the truth hurts, Wes. It looks like the truth is uh, the map that we're playing on. My jokes suck. All right, nice kill right there. And the camo is not in the hands of Red anymore. That's thin with a double four kills off the start of the game and one to the side of Red. So I can start here from uh, Thin and the boys. Yeah, very good start for, for Thin and the boys, right? I think this is as good as you could have hoped for right now. You are in control of pink, but for how long? Then going to get taken in those shields by that nade. It is going to get some good damage onto a player in car and a melee to the player pink too. Unfortunately for Thin, his teammate dies pink too. And with that, he's going to lose his life as well. So that's a 2-0 swing um, on that side of the map. But it does look like the damage was capitalized on that he was able to do car side in a 6-3, 7-4 game we have now. Cutting edge esports off to a, a very early start. I, how long can they keep this up? Well, they got pink control so far. Gish flying through the front pink face right there. It looks like he will clean up that kill. I love the bait and switching that's happening right now, but Atso's gonna have to back off. He's got his teammates pushing up through red face though, so he could actually go for a pinch, but he might be a second too late here. He's still got one, and he didn't see that player go up on P3, and there he is right above his head. Finn didn't see him either. Leaving that player down one shot. Looks like Dread takedown here up on top car. Gonna try to stay up, but he'll go down as well. I think Dread doing everything to stay alive here. I like this play. Needs to stay alive and unfortunately does not make the jump to the top of the base, but is gonna make a way, make out with his life towards the pink side and focus more on control. Like that play by him, but he's not able to do any damage before a player top, middle, and pink are able to double team him. And now multiple members for cutting edge esports stuck top blue. It does look like from the observer mode, they're gonna look to try and push pink. They do pick up a kill pink, which is gonna open up that side of the map for them and allow them to get out of that base safely. And now we see a player directly in pink three, another player pink two, and top middle goes down. That was beautiful by cutting edge esports in order to get out of that like sticky situation of being stuck at blue there. Yeah, it's a risky play to be on top mid without that pink side perimeter to uh, help you out there. I wonder who got the camo though. Of course, that's come up. I don't know if it's been burned or somebody has a dread takedown in the meantime and to put some good shots in. He does go down. I heard the camo get picked up, and it looks like Requiem has it. There he is, underneath red base. We'll see if he can do something with him. Pelu is onto him, and he's seeking to destroy here. Finally, a camo in this series goes in the hands of Cutting Edge Esports. Does pick up a kill, but great job by Liga to take him out immediately after picking up that kill. If you go one for one for camo in my books, that is a loss, and a great job by Liga Del Mall to cancel that out. They still find themselves down six, though, so Cutting Edge Esports yeah. doing a phenomenal job here, still in game two, to transition that early lead that they build and continue it on to this point. We did say them have a, a successful player in the series before this where they were able to build an early lead and continue to trade kills from that point. It seems like we're seeing a similar formula here and Requiem picking up a kill is going to extend the lead to five and that's exactly what they need to do in order to close this game two out. Yeah, we're at the halfway point in this match and Cutting Edge holds on to that lead with five kills. Dread takedown right now on car one. Just going to try to play patiently here. He needs teammates to help him out. He's getting shot from across the map. He's got one teammate with him. We'll see if he can do something to maybe bait and switch way through this battle here trying to push up on Atso. that's some nice shots to get him one shot he's got a teammate who can hopefully clean up the kill but he gets shot in the back and take it down we got a four kill difference here and pelu looking to make it a three kill he keeps that player back but he's getting pressured i'm loving the teamwork from chosen right now they're somehow clawing their way through this series with a, with a, a lead still yeah absolutely approaching the 30 kill mark is huge to continue this four kill lead 
but they do find themselves once again stuck top of base. They were able to successfully get out of blue the last time a, si a similar situation happened, but Atso is going to pick up a kill and deny the player trying to push out. Pelu is going to follow that up with a kill. And although Requiem has this flank on the pink, damage has been done. The lead has been cut into it. It's now just a two kill game. Throw those nades, baby. He's gonna have to get back here. Requiem under a lot of pressure. He does get taken down. Drift right now pushing up as well. He's got a teammate behind him also. This could be pretty devastating for Blue here. It looks like that lead has finally narrowed. A one kill difference. Now it's a tied game and we're at that 31 kill mark. So it does get a little scary for Chosen Legacy. Losing their lead in the last links of this game here. Another trade. Still got a nice hot tie game here. This is exactly the kind of Halo I'm looking to watch in the beginning of our Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. This is anyone's game right here. But it needs to be cutting edge esports if they want to continue the series. It's just the best of three. They lost game one very handedly. Great rebound performance here in game two so far. But they need to figure a way out to close this game. They had the lead for the first half. But immediately, Liga Del Mar had that set up. And now... It's a tie game. It's going to be a continued effort in order to shut this team down because tapping buttons is now flying at you, car, and you have to figure out a solution for it. A one kill. We get them all. Takes the lead. And now with that, we're going to see this cutting edge esports. What are they able to do with their backs against the wall? What are they able to do now that they're not in an advantageous position in order to play from the lead? How are they going to be able to close this game out in their favor? We're seeing the top map control coming in from tapping a team as well, though. The tapping's gonna push up on the red base here. He knows somebody's here, but he hasn't spotted him just yet. I like the tapping's gonna play this patient. He might get shot in the back, though, and he does. He's gonna have to get out of this fight. He's almost one shot here, and thankfully, he's got a teammate with him, and that's it right there, the buddy system. You wanna win these games, you gotta make sure you're moving in as a unit, uh, or at least in twos, and we're seeing this right now with Magnum as he pushes up on Car, taking down Pelu without losing a teammate here, keeping this game close, and a lead switch. Chosen Legacy taking it back with a one oh. kill. He now two kill, big kill from Requiem as they get down to the final eight kills in this game. I feel like it's Requiem that needs to be able to make the plays. Every time yes, it feels like go. a play needs to be made, Requiem is the player that's doing so. Great Ooh. shots by him. If he's able to stay alive here, that would be huge. But he lifts up oh. and loses his life because of it. You know he had no intention of lifting there. But he had to get out of there because Nate was coming in. Unfortunately for him, he hits that lift. And 44-44, Drift's able to pick up a kill. He smells a player under red. That player is going to get sandwiched. And they're going to take the lead. Camo is now up, and this Camo could be the one to decide the game. This could be the game deciding Camo. Liga Del Mal just creeping right back into the lead, but they dive in. That's going to be... They didn't even touch it. He actually manages to get it. That's big from Drift right now. He has the Camo. He's staying up, and Ooh. he kills that player from P3. The awareness from Drift right now to stay alive with that Camo might have sealed the game. That's 48. Going to keep the pressure up on Car. They know exactly where these players are spawning. We're now going to get to 49, and one more kill left to close this game. An unfortunate situation for Chosen Legacy to have to lose after the lead that they had maintained for what must have been like 60, 70 percent of this game. Uh, Liga Del Mal just creeping back and taking that W. Yeah, phenomenal job uh, by Cutting Edge Esports to show us what all they were made of there in game two. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough to take down Liga Del Mal. At so 16, 14, and 11, the man was doing it all. Uh, the amount of damage that he was laying down had to be incredible, right? 2300 yeah. in the Slayer. But he had a couple of teammates that were right behind him with that. And only Requiem on the other side of the, of the other side the losing team that was able to kind of match that similar performance damage wise it's yeah it, it's difficult pill to swallow if you're a velocity um esports fan but there is a loser's bracket run ahead of them if they're able to collect themselves and step it up just a little bit did i make a big mistake are we on chosen legacy or is this virginia velocity i'm pretty sure this is chosen oh, it's chosen right <laughs> this is uh chosen you know it's cutting edge cutting, it's cutting edge. edge what am i saying? saying two two right. different teams that are completely wrong it's cutting edge esports they change uh, their name every weekend so it's not on us right i mean that's that's really what happens these guys change their names so much but uh but cutting edge esports you got to give some credit to them they definitely held on liga is a top four team and they practically won that game so big plays from uh from cutting edge they're not out of the tournament they're going to drop into losers bracket but you also got to hand it to Liga Del Mal, that final play in the end there with Drift, the awareness that this man had to, to probably hear a call out and then spin around on a dime, get the headshot and stay alive while no shields. Uh, definitely the game saver from Drift right there. But that'll close our series. Liga Del Mal will move on in the winner's bracket. We got more matches coming up, so don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
I am muted. Welcome back to our Esports Arena Halo 5 4v4. Boy, do we got a matchup you don't want to miss. We've got Frosty and Renegade teaming together. Wes, is this even fair? We've got a two-time world champion, and we've got the 2018 world champion on the same team with Soul Snipe and Druck, who are some of the best new players uh, since the series, or since the uh, you know Halo 5 Esports is kind of wrapped. So uh, it just doesn't seem fair right now. Uh, yeah, if this we... team doesn't win, I think it'd be shocking to everyone in this tournament including the team that they're playing against right and yeah. in saying that it's a unbelievable uphill battle for anyone that's going to be competing against these guys the amount of individual skill uh on the fung four was already the highest at the tournament and now they've added frost to their roster that's only going to raise their ability and their ceiling as a team uh you can never go wrong with frosty you could probably never go wrong with renegade and putting them together it, it feels like they would have to be playing at an all-time low in order to not be in the finals and not win this thing. Yeah. Uh, outside of maybe a couple other teams that that can, if they're playing on fire, compete with the likes of these two. Uh, and by the way, we got a pretty great team that they're going up against. We've got No Ice, which is uh, JKV, Brainstorm, Gold Star BR, and uh, UEG. We've been calling him Jared because his name is uh, difficult to pronounce. By the way, I, I do see the invites. I had to reset the app because uh, the, the menu got a little messed up for me. So if you can give me one more invite to the Treasure lobby. Treasure in uh, here. Uh, am I? See, that's that's the thing. It's like it said I was in there too, but I wasn't. I was. I was. Okay, now okay. I think I'm in here for real. Okay. And now, yeah. uh, okay, now I'm observer. I think we should be good to go. Uh, by the way, uh, our format has changed. So let me just read off for you guys the, the changes in format here. We are in round five of the winner's bracket. So we're looking at Capture the Flag, Fathom, Slayer on Coliseum, Strongholds on Eden. So we're not going to get you know two Slayers in a row or two Strongholds in a row. We get set game types that are predetermined, and these players will have to play them. So it really uh, you know it ensures that all these rosters are playing their best Halo. There's no specific advantages. So it will be a CTF Fathom to kick it off, Wes. CTF Fathom, a, a game type where I've seen Frosty do way too much work with the railgun throughout his yeah. entire Halo 5 career, right? So if I'm a member of the blue team here, I'm going in saying we got to get power-ups, we got to get power weapons to even think that we have a chance in stopping uh, the juggernauts that we're going up against. So look for this early battle for the railgun to really decide how that early game's going to go and hope to God, if you're a fan of the blue team, that Frosty does not end up with that railgun. Yeah, this is the kind of map game type combo where you see Frosty post the the 50 plus kill eights YouTube video. So uh, so if he's playing, you know, as well as I know he can, then uh, things are pretty scary for our no ice roster. But 
like I said, this is a great team. Let's see what kind of matchup we got coming up here. We're going to kick it off. Fathom CTF, CTF, the camo, the railgun. Very important points to control. Absolutely. And we're going to kick this one off with none other than Frosty. He's going to try and defend camo. But there is a player for no ice that's able to get up there very quickly. Unfortunately for that player, his teammate that went for railgun is going to get taken down. And just like we kind of called it earlier in the pregame, Frosty's going to find himself with not only two kills, but a full railgun in his hands. And he's already picked up a double. And this is a flag being run. Fortunately for no ice, they were able to get that player on the flag uh, killed. And with that, Frosty's not really going to be able to pull this without getting some kills, I don't think. Unless... Soul Snipe picks up a double, which he does in the kill feed, and now Frosty trying to do it all right now. Maybe trying to juggle too much with that flag with the power weapon in his hand. He's going to get taken down. Yeah, hopefully we don't get that incoming 50 kill Frosty game, at least not for no ice. It's the last thing they're going to want to see here. JK, though, going to try to live up on top mid. He doesn't have any help whatsoever. That's an early flag cap, one on the board for Fung 4. They won four tournaments in a row, and now they got an upgrade. Did it get any worse for these guys on no ice? Uh, I don't know. We're going to find out in these next two flags. Frosty trying to be sneaky right now. Knows that there's multiple players top middle for no ice. He's going to try and just overextend, get into the enemy team space, potentially pick up a kill, and then run this flag, I would say. But his flag's going to be pulled, so he's going to try and turn this into almost a stalemate situation unless his teammates are able to kill that fly player and return it. Does miss the jump to top middle, nearly falls off, but catches himself at the last second. And somehow, without being touched, he's going to throw that to his teammate to punch in. And a great job there by Soul Snipe and the team to put in a quick two fly cap. Yeah, no surprise from Soul Snipe seeing this man capture flags. He's one of the fastest players on the team. He loves going for these flag runs. He loves getting behind enemy lines and applying pressure. So we already see that from Soul Snipe. Renegade in the meantime trying to do exactly that. Gets taken down. Nice little kill right there from Jared. He's going to try to stay up, get himself maybe a three shot. He's got a teammate to pick that up. And now he can move up here with the rail in the hands of Red. Some shots coming in. Hopefully he gets the kill and he does. That's a rail down and the camo player has it. So let's see what he's up to. Jump into his POV. Gold star. Absolutely, Jared, you have the momentum going in your favor right now. You knew there's the player elbow. He's going to push these two players. Let's get some good damage on the one. Face up the kill, actually, and now Renegades look to press him. They do get a trade, and that, unfortunately for Jared, is a bad trade because no one is there to pick up the flag after picking up the two kills, so it's just going to be all for naught. As, as we're talking in an objective relationship, no one's there to efficiently try capitalize on those two kills and with that it does look like Funk 4 is gonna somehow have three dead and no ice is gonna actually pull this fight. Frosty kind of caught with his pants down there. He missed his jump to top mid, spun around, did the same thing again and then just got melted. In the meantime, Brainstorm's running this flag and he's doing a great job of that. That will be a cap. Oh, wait a second. Please make sure you pick that up and put that in. That's two to one on the board. Brainstorm doing a good job for his team there, keeping things close as we get down to this final flag cap. Two to one, so that was a phenomenal job for them to, the to be down 2-0 and to, to get that flag up on the board. Shows a sign of life for no ice, but how much life do they have? Because Soul Snipe has gotten this flag all the way to his face. Frosty's there to catch the toss, and Soul, like, how easy did that flag cap just look? It's like, there's zero resistance in that flag cap, and it really didn't feel like the slaves were even going in the favor of Funk 4. I guess there was a potential moment where there may have been three dead for no ice, but the quickest flag right on the map through bottom middle is what Soul Snipe picked. And with that, and because he was able to get there, like using the thrust and the toss of the flag, yeah. it was like there was such a limited amount of time for anyone on No Ice to even impact that game. The crazy thing about Fathom CTF is these matches can go back and forth and run to time sometimes, but if you can get away with that bottom mid flag run, you're looking at about a 10 second flag run. So Soul Snipe, I think that might have been the second time he ran that flag through bottom mid. He's fast at doing it, and especially when he has Frosty just waiting there ready to uh, you know grab the baton and put it in, then it, it speeds it up even more so. So, I mean, taking full advantage of the slays that they got, nobody really even got that many slays. We got 12 from Renegade. He went 12 and 6, so uh, leading the board, uh, Renegade, a huge slayer as usual. But we're already jumping into our second game here. Mm. Uh, we're going to find out what that is. That should be. There you go. Slayer on Coliseum. Yeah, on one half, I would say, no, I did a good job of getting that flag cap that they earned uh, in and, and through the boards. But at no point did they ever actually have 
like a highly contested game right there, right? We saw Fung 4 close that immediately after uh, that flag went in for no ice. They, they immediately were able to get that third cap, and that shows that they don't want to mess around with this team. They don't want to give this team any opportunity to make a game close and turn it into an overtime situation. Uh, so it's going to take a lot from no ice, and an early lead here is going to be what exactly the doctor ordered for them. Soul Sign, oh. unfortunately, is able to pick up double. Uh, delineate that lead and and also get the snipe into drug's hand yeah drug now has the snipe i, I was watching soul snipes uh, pov and he did the super slide across the map to get to elbow in a couple seconds he wrapped all the way around the map and he took the sniper right out of gold star's hands and now of course drug has it he's going to try to live up here just narrowly staying alive he's got four shots left in the chamber and his teammates are doing the work that's five to five on the board so even for now but you can see that pressure coming in. JK is going to go down in the trench. Druck looking for some new spawners on the elbow. We'll see if he can grab some picks here. Yeah, they need to get the snipe out of Druck's hands. Four bullets is enough for him to do it. Once he has damage with, he is only going to land a body shot. And they take him down. So that's a great job by No Ice to be in a disadvantageous situation right there and somehow get the kills you need in order to get the power weapons out of the hands the of lead. Funk 4. I'm wondering what Brainstorm's play is going to be here, having been bottom rockets for just a little bit now. He's going to have a teammate above him. And with that, it looks like they're just going to settle for controlling elbow here. Nice shots on the Renegade. It's going to allow him to tie the game up, but immediately Druck takes down uh, Derrigan right now and, and extend that lead back to one. A big kill again by Brainstorm. He's playing this very slow. Are you are you thinking that this is like a methodical play that can find success against a team like Funk 4? Or do you think that they need to be more aggressive than Funk 4 in order to try and take a game in this series? I, I think you'd want to fight fire with fire. You'd want to be playing fast and aggressive, though. It looks like Brainstorm was getting away with that slow kind of methodical play despite that. And No Ice is keeping this at a pretty even scoreline. You got a two-kill deficit right now, but the Rockets are up. Frosty's looking to grab him, and if he picks those up after getting this kill, which I'm only expecting is going to happen, there we go on the blue trench. That's one. He will get shot, and he will have to burn that second rocket, though. So Rockets off the map. Three-kill lead on the side of Fung 4 as they continue this Kali Slayer. Frosty unable to pick up that kill, and Jared trying to get away with his life is going to be spotted. Oh, goes for the ninja and almost lands it, but Renegade too fast for him. Actually gets the back smack on him before he can get that ninja off. And with that, the game is actually tied up, and this is a great job by No Ice, right? The snipe's coming up, though, and that's what is always in the back of my head. It's this next set of power weapons that come up. How are they going to be able to handle Funk 4 if Funk 4 is able to get in control? Because right now, Funk 4 is set up for this snipe, and it's going to go into the hands of one of these dominant slayers, and they're probably going to go off with it. And what are they going to be able to do to stop that from happening? Yeah, you can see all players on Funk 4 on that snipe side, but nice stick right there. That's Frosty down, but Renegade coming in to pick up the pieces. I believe he has that snipe in hands. He goes down as well, though. And that's Jared with the snipe. If anything, I'm wondering if he should just shoot off a couple of these bullets, hopefully land a headshot in the meantime here. He's looking for the spawners, trying to find some sort of an opportunity. Surprising how close this game is, though. No ice keeping it even. And Jared with an opportunity to make some plays. If he can just stay alive, he's going to be in a hell of a pinch, though. He goes down, and that's a fresh sniper, practically. Soul Snipe mm. looking to pick it up and maybe get a triple. He does get a double. Sniper in hand to Soul Snipe. I'm expecting some big plays here. I mean, he did work with the DMR. It's almost reluctant to, to pick up the snipe in that situation after having so much damage right there with that weapon. The DMR can be such a powerful weapon if positioned correctly, but the snipe is more lethal, I would say. And with that, Soul Snipe is going to rip the head off of a player for no ice. He's going to be pushing top mid here. Three bullets left in the chamber. Let's we'll see what he can do with it. Just spot a player below him a catwalk, surrounded by multiple players. He's going to try and get out of there, and I like that by him. Um, is going to miss the shot on the Gold Star, which is going to allow Gold Star to take him out. But the rest of his team is nowhere to be found. And with that, no ice actually picked up a couple unanswered kills. JK playing fast right now. This guy's got a very high sense. You can see how fast he's just spinning around. Somebody's got the snipe. They got a body shot right there. That's Frosty, I think, who just went down. That's two big kills from Brainstorm and Gold Star just to keep things even there. Gold Star still firing some nice shots to get the shields off that player. He does have a sniper in the back pocket, but I think it's out of ammo. It looks like they're going to keep pressuring these players on Cave. It is still neck and neck as we get to this 40-point mark. Anyone can take it in this game, and that's that's not what I expected to see. Fung 4 are going to have to start to ramp up if they don't want to lose early here. Yeah, this game is going down to the wire, and I love that by No Ice because they are against, like we said, 
a heavy juggernaut favorite team in Funk 4, but they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them here in game two. Game one might have been lopsided, but game two, it's 40 to 40. Last 10 kills, what do you have in you know ice? You'll have to show us here. I love that they have the position right now that they have. They're at snipe, they have control. You do see multiple members in observer mode pushing from Funk 4, but Brainstorm is gonna be able to push them back. A nice melee, does he land a stick? No, and Druck is able to get the kill on the Gold Star VR because of it. And with that, it looks like JK is able to trade out Frosty across the map. The game is even right now, but this is the point where things get kind of scary because time and time again, I've seen Fung 4 clutch up. Even when it looks like they're going to lose, Renegade will find a way. He'll get some crazy kills. Somebody's going to start going off and just start clutching up. And it's now 45 to 43. Soul Snipe living on the bottom of the map here. His teammates picking up the kills as well. He's going to go into a 1v1 here on the... Oh, actually, that player has no idea. He's there. He's trying to stick them. He does get the melee. There's the kill. 47 to 43 and a four kill deficit at this point. The game is a scary situation for no ice. Yeah, absolutely. You want to see no ice get these snipes and rockets and, and try and run away with this game. They are able to get the snipe, but Druck already has the rocket and the sniper gets taken down. Ooh. Goldstar BR, though, wins a huge one on one, but dies to the nade from Renegade. And with that 50 47 2 0, the series Fung 4 is going to advance. But no ice showing they have what it takes to contest this team in the Slayers. And that was a great performance by them to kind of ride that momentum into the loser's bracket because that's where they're headed. Nice to not see a blowout here. We got a lot of contention. We got good slays on both sides, great accuracy on both sides, great damage on both sides. The most damage in the game actually went down to Jared, who has a 60, uh, 61 accuracy as well. Uh, though he went seven and 12, interesting that he got the most damage uh, in the entire lobby, but had the worst score line. That just happens sometimes, I guess. Uh, but it's just good to, to see that, you know, things were, were relatively close uh, and unfortunately, that's a best of three series because I'm, I'm very curious to see how this would have gone if it went the distance in maybe a best of five or a best of seven. Um, but that will be it for no ice in the winner's bracket. They're going to be dropping down to losers. Yeah, unfortunately for them. But I think it's not necessarily the worst thing, right? Yeah, you ran into this Fung 4 team kind of early in the bracket. And no, you don't want to lose to them. Um, right. But you want to be able to compete with them and you want to be able to put on strong performances when you're given the opportunity to play them. I think that's what they did. I know Fathom Flag was kind of lopsided and quick, but like they rebounded very well in the Slayer. And I think that that bodes well when they know that they're playing against lesser competition than a team like Funk 4. Absolutely. I mean, you know, they lost, unfortunately, but if you're going to lose, losing in this fashion is probably, you know, the best that you could hope for. A very, very close series from them, and they hopefully can hold on to, I think they got some good momentum going into losers. They should take this performance and use it as a, you know, as a confidence boost, ripping through that losers bracket, and maybe we'll get a chance to see that no ice team again. But in the meantime, as expected, our Fung 4 team will move forward in the winners bracket. We got more winners bracket coming up soon, so don't go anywhere. Stay tuned.
We have returned to Esports Arena Halo 5 4v4, $1,000 on the line, and it looks like we've got not one, but two God Squads in this tournament, West. Uh, and this God Squad is comprised of Bound, Arctic, Boo Boo Doo Boo, and Just Saiyan. So, damn, this is one hell of a roster here. They're going to go up against a new and improved Liga del Mal. You've got uh, Atso, Drift, Pelagot, who we're used to seeing, but they got tapping buttons there to round out the roster, making things, I'd say, new and improved. So, uh, one hell of a matchup coming up in this winner's uh, round six. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see. I know Saiyan and Bound and Arctic didn't have the the performance they wanted to last weekend, so they picked up Boobadoobu, and I think that addition is going to be an unbelievable addition uh, to see how far this team uh, can go and what they're capable of. So we all know what Boobadoobu was and the force that he was in Halo yeah. 5, so only good things to come from the addition of that as well. He's been doing his thing in other Halos as well, so you know his thumbs are ready to get get underway here we're just hoping that he's played a little bit of halo 5 recently in order to be warmed up to the mechanical skill that it takes yeah. uh but this league of del mall team has consistently been on halo 5 grinding it out so uh kind of two new individual additions to each of these teams and we're going to see if tapping buttons or boo doo ends up being the bigger uh difference maker in this series but i would still give the favorite to boo doo and that squad as they uh look to win the series and get to the winner's finals Definitely. Now, we know Boo Boo's been playing MCC recently, but as you said, this man's a star performer. He was on the original Splice squad. He was on Envious. He's, you know, he's always in top four, top three, uh, you know, in these tournaments. So he's, he's an absolute monster of a player. So I don't think it's going to be too hard for him to switch back over to Halo 5. We're just about to jump into our Fathom CTF, by the way. The game types you can expect to see here are Fathom, CTF, Slayer on Coliseum. And if we get there, we'll have a strongholds on Eden. But I don't know if we're going to get there. We got one hell of a squad. Uh, love God is what they call themselves as we kick okay. off our Fathom CTS. TCF. 
I can support that 100%. We got Booba Dooba flying top middle. Getting the camo immediately, but a great job. Lively get that mod to immediately take him down. And it's going to be trades everywhere. It's two on two right now. And it does look like a player or love God is going to be able to pull that flag. Uh, but I guess it was tapping buttons that pulled the yeah. flag. I'm sorry. And with that, he's going to be taken down. And Booba Dooba spawns up, gets some good damage for his teammates bound and saying to capitalize on Gotta love that early pressure from Liga trying to capitalize on that flag as early as possible. They uh, they skipped the railgun as well, and finally the rail's in play 40 seconds after the match has started, which you don't usually see, but Saiyan with the railgun is a deadly combo. Just wait and see what this man can put together. He almost gets one, and thankfully they managed to just snuff him out. That blue player has picked up the rail. We'll see what they can do with it, but Arctic putting on the pressure here. Arctic, another HCS pro player to round out this roster, just full of incredible mm. talent time around. Great shot by Switch there to win that one-on-one -on -one against Boopadoo on the flag player. And we're going to see if it ends up making a difference in this flag run because the rest of Love God is going to be in a position to, to secure this cap, I believe. There are multiple players for Liga Del Mall trying to push that mid, but they get taken down by a bound. Drift wins another one-on-one -on -one against Boo Boo and Drift. Getting the better of Boo Boo, Boo but in, in relation to the objective, it looks like Boo Boo Doo and friends Love God are gonna put themselves on the board 1-0 early on. Yep, Love God did their job there. They got that first flag nice and clean. Drift getting taken down on the bridge as well. Tapping buttons, forced it back down. And he can see another flag is being pulled. Bound's got a railgun as well, so only expecting some pressure right here. There's the first kill for Bound. That flag's still going. That player, you can see him crouching. I don't know if he's slow playing this flag or what. They might not be aware of the fact that he's under there. Bound gonna try to get a kill. That's Boo Boo. And he does get back smacked. That flag's out front. Mm. A chance for a potential return is gonna all come down to Drift, who's staying alive in red base. There's one more at bottom mid. Drift needs to delay and slay here if he wants any chance for a re. And it looks like they just narrowly missed it. They're gonna get that into the red base. That should be a re and a second capture. A new camo coming up and the railgun. We're getting down to our third final capture. That was a great job by Saiyan and Arctic right there to secure that cap. They both played their lives so perfectly, and with it, they award themselves with the second cap of the game. They look to cap this third as another player for their team is going to be able to pull that out and get it all the way across the map. Arctic is going to be getting shot in the back. He's going to play his life and be just a distraction for tapping buttons. Tapping buttons going to be forced to pay his attention over there. There are three currently dead, and Boobadoo is no shield, so this return should come in as Boobadoo goes down. And with that, I believe Liga them all could have an opportunity here to get some map control. Good work from Liga right there, managing to cut their losses, tapping buttons, like just his head on a swivel there. He turned around, managed to get a crucial stick, and now Atso putting on the pressure in Red Treehouse here. He will chase this guy down. There's the kill. And they're looking to grab that flag as well. You can see they got two. Uh, they're gonna, they're gonna, they got a bit of a catch up. They're gonna have to play here, but the flag is out. They're gonna try to get it through that red mm. tree house, and uh, the slays are coming in. Players dropping left and right over that flag. Yeah, great, Nate, and a, a good finish by tapping button there. It's gonna be two dead currently for Love God, but there's no one there to pull the flag, and it looks like this flag pull is gonna be just the longest thing of all time, right? Like this is the longest route, which has allowed multiple yeah. members of Love God to not only like. Haven't have an impact on this flag run once, but they've lost their lives and now have another opportunity to like influence this flag run. And I think that that's going to come back to bite Liga Del Mall as we see a player go down. And I believe the region is going to come in. We get it off screen. So yes, it is going to be bound that hops on it. And with the help of saying they're able to secure that re or that flag run. Uh oh, the player does disconnect, and we have a bit of a situation here. Someone's controller. I don't know if that's the observer's controller or if it's the player's controller. We're gonna have to get a new set of batteries. You should be wired, by the way. Wired controllers are the play here. Uh, and they are wired. Apparently it's still disconnected despite that, but that's okay. We're back. Bound putting the pressure on from behind. He's got somebody picking up camo. It looks like that might've been Atso grabbing it. He goes for the reach challenge, wins the fight as well. Huge play from Atso. Let's see what he can do here. Is he, oh, he's dead. So take it back. <laughs> 2-0 being the score, still fairly early, still plenty of time from Liga Del Mall to come back in this game, but so far they've been just outslayed and kind of outrun. There has been very little opportunity for them to control the map. Their flag is being pulled again by Bound, and with that, Saiyan's going to be there to finish up that kill. Bound, how are you going to get this flag out of the bases? Trick question is you're not. Great job by Liga to play defense there, but I want to see some offensive and some map control come from them 
in order to get something going in their favor, they have two flags to make up for, they have seven minutes to do it. Finally, Pelu finds himself with a railgun. This could be the opportunity we're looking uh -oh. for. Not like this. You cannot thrust through that spot there. You need to make sure you get a clean crouch jump. If you try to thrust, it puts you in a standing position. You'll never be able to get through that spot anymore. So he drops the rail. That's now in the hands of Saiyan. Saiyan's got two shots to work with. You know he's going to put this to good use the moment he has an opportunity. This might very well be our final push up on the base here, unless Liga can thwart this pressure. They're doing a pretty good job so far, but that's one kill right there. Saiyan with a wonder nade into the blue base. I'm just looking for that opening. Fight on the porch. Boo Boo wins the fight on the porch. Saiyan looking for a player on generator. Looks like elbows the spawn, but you also got Silo to worry about, and Saiyan is intimately aware of that. He's going to try to find someone. But he can't hit that rail just yet. Trying to back out here. Going for the double melee. He does go down. That's a rail in the hands of Blue as Liga try to do something to stop this pressure. Ten seconds to rail gun. Yeah, Liga tries. They might. The pressure is always continuously going to be on. Love God has the players that just play at such a fast pace that just are always rail holding forward, up. applying so much pressure at all times that makes it feel like you're getting overwhelmed when in reality you probably need to be able to keep up with that pace in order to be long in this series, right? Railgun does go in the hands of Just Saiyan right now, and map control still in favor of Love God. It's like, try as they might, Liga Del Mall is continuously forced to play defense and worry about players in their base, like Bound, pulling the flag currently. They've been fighting tooth and nail here. The defense has been great, but like you said, that's all they've been able to do. They cannot breathe. All they can do is just hopelessly try to defend, but Boo Boo has the camo. He's running that flag, and I'm gonna call it West. I think this is the one that's gonna seal the deal. Just Saiyan's got a rail just to add insult to injury. One player left to try to deny it. He's not gonna be good enough. That's Boo Boo capping that flag for a 3-0 victory against Liga Del Mal. Strong as Liga Del Mal looked in their previous series, this Love God team is literally formed to win this tournament, I believe. Yeah. And with that, they're going to look very dominant here in game one. I think Liga Del Mal, they are a very tough team to beat, but Love God makes it look easy because of how strong of the individuals are on that team. When I first saw Renegade and Frosty teaming together, I thought this is not going to be fair. Fung Four have won four tournaments in a row. They're definitely going to win this time around. But then I saw this team. Then I saw Love God, Boo Boo, Saiyan, Bound, and Arctic. This team, like you said, they're designed to win this tournament. We'll see if they can make it down to grand finals. We'll see if they can take out that Fung Four who have just been a pest. They have won every single tournament so far. I'm looking at that scoreboard, uh, by the way, Clutch uh, Saiyan went 21 and nine in that game. He overperformed, I'd say. He, uh, he outperformed everyone in the entire lobby by a significant margin. So I know that man's streaming. You're definitely gonna wanna check him out. Sane's playing hot today. Absolutely. I mean, Sane's always playing, I feel like at He's such a high level. <laughs> it's just a matter of like, <clears throat> him finding himself on the right team in order to kind of suit his play style and how he's going to go about. I think that these guys are probably pretty good uh, and and that he's more comfortable with this team than ever we've seen in these tournaments. So I believe he's probably going to shine even brighter now that he has the team around him that kind of complements what he's trying to do in game. Yeah, Saiyan's definitely a man who likes to get slays, likes to stay alive, and he does a great job of both of those things. And uh, that's going to be very useful in our game time coming up next year. We got Coliseum Slayer coming up. Slaying Prowess is the name of the game here. Liga Del Mal, one final shot in this series to stay in the winner's bracket. They're going to have to win this game. If not, they're going to be drop dropped into losers. We're going to find out in our Coli Slayer. We've got Rockets. we got Snipe. I'm curious to see how this one kicks off. Uh, Wes, I'm going to let you do the honors. Yeah, Coli Slayer. And this is an opportunity for Liga Del Mal to, to come back in this series. I feel like the Slayers are always the opportunity that... The, uh, the underdog needs, but you have to win this game. Obviously, in a best of three, if you lose this game, you're out and you're sent to loser's bracket. But I want to see more life out of Liga Del Mal. Map control was never in their favor, I felt like. Even when there was a glimpse of an opportunity to have it, they kind of lost it immediately. Uh, there was no real ever sweat of a flag uh, going in their favor the last game, but you don't really have to worry about that objective. The only objective is slays and power weapons in a map and a game type. Uh, like Coliseum Slayer, so we're gonna see Boo Boo, -Boo make his way towards the snipe and Bound's able to trade kills. I believe Boo Boo thought he was needing the snipe to himself, but the snipe didn't go anywhere. <laughs> Joke's on you, Boo Boo. Um, and with that, three actually go dead early on for Love God. I mean, everything looked great with that opening strat from Boo Boo. It's just the nade didn't come together, and then he just got melted from the side of rocks. A lot of rocks pressure in the start of this game, and a five, six, and now a five kill lead. Uh, on the side of Liga Del Mal, they got seven to one in the start of this game, and that's the exact start they need to have. But can they hold on to this and keep up this pressure? Rockets in the hands of Atso. We'll see what he can do. 
big oh, kill by Atso there, right? 8-2, to two, and you need to extend this lead, and you need to continue it, because you don't want this game to be close as we enter the late game. And it's already 10-2. to two. Great job by all of Liga Del Mall so far to just unbelievably start the game off, to be honest. Uh, getting control of both sets of power weapons is the key. Drift is going to have the snipe in his hands. At Atso already used the rockets uh, to success. And you don't want to start losing lives without trading kills from this point, because now the lead has been cut to just four. You saw a sniper in the hands of someone there as well. I think they died. Arctic with the laser cannon. He's got the carbine. And this thing, I know he can start melting foes with. Uh, I think we're trying to find the sniper. There it is. Saiyan's got it. Of course, Saiyan has it. You know, oh, I take it back. He's not going to be able to land anything with it, at least on that POV. He's dropped into the hands of Liga. Liga is still holding onto a six kill lead here. So doing great so far. Let's see if they can maintain that. Boo Boo looking to win this fight, and he doesn't. Starting to feel like uh, maybe he's a little rusty. I know he's just coming off of MCC. He's got to get his head back in that H5 game. Yeah, Bound trying to stay alive here. Uh, is going to find himself surrounded by players from Liga. And that's a phenomenal job. Liga having so much more control in Coliseum Slayer than they ever had on Fathom Flag, even early on in the game. They've got the lead back up to 10, and that's a great job by them. Rockets are currently up, so I want to see them compete for these Rockets in order to continue this lead. How the heck is Liga pulling this off? They, they must, they're getting two kills for every death, which is uh, just beautiful from them. But Boo Boo's looking to control these rockets. He's not going to pick them just, just yet. He knows that he doesn't have a Slay's advantage, and he does get melted, unfortunately. Arctic is down there on the bottom of the map. Drift right now. Gonna look to support his teammate, who had to lead pick up the rockets. We're trying to find him frantically. <laughs> and I, I, I think he burned one of them. He's got one more in the back pocket that's tapping buttons. Probably the best man to give a rocket launcher. We'll see what he can pull off here. There's a couple players right in front of him. That's some good shots from him. A killing spree from tapping. Backing down now. Tapping's going off here. 24, 20, 24 to 10, 25 to 10. What's happening? Yeah, this is an absolute blowout bloodbath on the side of Liga Del Mar. And they're not looking to trade kills. They're looking to just influence pain on Love God right now. It doesn't seem like Love God is able to deal with the control of the maps that Liga Del Mar has had so far. Love seeing this rebound game two out of them because we know that these guys are capable of playing at such a high level and winning this tournament, actually. So 30 to 13, Love God struggling with everything being thrown at them right now. Liga Del Mar playing this game type almost to a perfection. Despite the now massive deficit and nice trade there from Drift as well, I still believe that Love God can make this comeback. I just know this team is that caliber. But if this team wants to stand up the Fung 4, this cannot be the game gameplay that we see. They, they got to be destroying Liga. Right now, they're struggling to win the game. They're losing by a good 7, 18 kills at this point. Same will push up, though. You've got a teammate with them on Snipe's side. They got to work together to get these kills. There's some crucial ones from Arctic right there. Two more left on the map, and they're coming up from the trenches as Just Saiyan's going to try to back down and stay alive here work with his team to get just to catch up a little bit yeah i like that you touched on that right i think if this team has any plans of competing with funk four and they're struggling with liga del mall like they are right yeah. now what does that say about their opportunity in that series because we know how strong funk four is we've seen funk four dismantle this liga uh -oh. del mall team but maybe the addition of tapping buttons has been the difference but as i say that four go down for liga del mall we have boo boo with the snipe He's going to know all of these players are spawning at blue. This is the opportunity they need. If they're going to come back in this game, it has to be now. And three What's straight happening? kills go in their favor. Love God, kill all four once again. And the lead is down to eight. Two full team wipes. They are four spawning them in the red side of the map. And Boo Boo is intimately aware of this. He's going to fire shots into that player on Sneaky. No, Boo Boo. Not like this. You got to clamber. Use it. Got to do something, man. Got to do something there. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, I think that that's a little bit of the, uh, I mean, and that's what I was talking about. I'm not sure how much Halo 5 Boo Boo's been playing recently, but it's his movement off the par, and I would say after seeing something like that, maybe he's just a little bit rusty uh, to all the Halo 5 mechanics and, and what it takes uh, to really have a good grasp for those in-game and at, in an intense situation, because right now they had an opportunity to crawl back. They had the lead down to eight. But it's extended up to nine at this point, and it feels like Liga Del Mall has got their footing back on the map. We got 42 kills. Boo Boo looking to change that, but he doesn't. That's now 43. Atso pushing up, keeping up the pressure. That's a nice melee from Atso. Six kills left, and it's almost unwinnable at this point because they can just get some trades, trades uh, when they go down, and that'll be good enough to seal it out. Pelu with two great nades, though, or maybe one nade, and a cluster lock from him. That's four kills left before they take this game. I'm going to call it Wes. I think Liga might have pulled this one out. And I'm surprised to see it. Nah. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, going into this game, I didn't think we would see Liga finish this game out on top. But after that early start that they had, there was no way they were going to blow that lead, right? I mean, there was an opportunity there, but as soon as Boo Boo falls off the map, all of the controls that Love God had was lost, and Liga Dama was able to find that opening and extend this game and this series into a game three. Love God better start praying to God. They got one more shot to not get locked or knocked into losers bracket. And honestly, if they get knocked into losers now, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to claw their way back. Like we said, they, I, I believe, were designed to take out Fung 4, not designed to be taken down by Liga before even reaching Fung 4. So uh, something's got to change here. They got to recollect themselves. The next game type, let me just check format real quick and see if there's any you know, possibility for an advantage here uh, for Liga, but it looks like it's going to be a strongholds on Eden coming up next. Uh, so they're going to have to come down to that objective teamwork. And, uh, you know, I know Love God's capable of it, but damn, was that a bit of a lopsided slayer? Uh, and I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the scoreboard right now. I've got 13 and six from tapping buttons. He's the wild card of the team. We know this guy has professional HCS experience and he's, he's now upgraded Liga and they're looking damn good. They've proven that they can win a Slayer. I'm not still convinced that they can win an objective against this team. Yeah. Um, but they're going to have to if they want to continue a winner's bracket uh, run today. And and that's what it's going to take to beat the good teams, right? right? Unfortunately for them, there aren't two Slayers in every series. But the Slayer does allow them to stay alive in this series. So they can pat themselves on the back for that win. But I'm sure that they have the ambitions and the hopes to win this series outright. So going into yeah. Game 3, I think it's going to be... Uh, utterly important that they're able to have the same power up and power weapon control that they had there in game two. There were no power ups, obviously, on Coliseum, right. but they were able to get the snipe and they were able to get the rockets early on. And I think that that's why they were able to take that game. Yeah. Uh, so it will definitely come down to power ups, power weapons for sure. We got the rockets, we got the OS and the camo. So a lot to fight for here. On top of that, I'm expecting to see a lot of contention for that catwalk, for that red nest. Usually the best two places to maintain a capture of but we'll see if they can push for a trip cap uh, as well if they get the opportunity. We're just about to load this up, though. Strongholds, Eden, uh, one final chance for both these teams to stay in the winner's bracket. The loser is going to get knocked down. Just waiting for it to go here. Eden Strongholds, name of the game. I think if, if you were to pick a team to really run away with this, obviously Love God has got to be your favorite. I do need to see more out of Love God, though. I expected that this series to be a 2-0 from them if I wanted them to can be able to compete with Fung 4 later on in this tournament. And I think they, they kind of let me down in that last game, seeing that it was a very lopsided score, and they didn't really have an answer to get the map control back until uh, it was almost too late. Saiyan, doing a phenomenal job here at the start, is going to be able to pick up a kill, and if he's able to Ooh. pick up the second, which he is, it's all four dead. Camo's going to go in their hands. They have overshot already, and I'm assuming one of the players is going to go for that Nice set of rockets that are outside. Control is in their favor, and that's the start that Love God wants. This is the Love God I expected to see. That's definitely a little replay moment from Saiyan right there. That was a crucial double. He was jiggle peeking the hell out of that little corner on security, just uh, not revealing any, like, you know, not giving his enemy uh, an opportunity to fire back. He played that so damn well. He earned the camo for it. Now he's going to try to pick up some kills here. He'll get the assist. Red Nest is the last one left to be captured. They forced a red side spawn, and I believe Sane's aware of that. He's going to put the pressure in, knock that player down, as they got eight points, now nine points in counting at the start of this game. Sane continuing to do work with this game. Oh, the amount of damage that he's able to assist his team with while also making sure his team controls this catwalk. Uh, stronghold is utterly important to their team's success. They're up 14-0 early on. It looks like... Liga Del Mall has opted to use Red Blue Bin oh. in order to, to get their first stronghold. And somehow, Red Nest is still uncaptured. That's a bit of a blunder by Love God. And now, it looks like Liga Del Mall is actually going to be in control without only picking up a few kills. That's very surprising and a bit of a blunder, in my opinion, from Love God to not go, in, go ahead and get Red Nest there. Uh, it should have been clean from Boo Boo right there, but he unfortunately threaded the needle and just narrowly missed that rocket. It went right through uh, in the red window there. Uh, and he wasn't able to get the kill. They got the red nest, but red team still hold on to the two base capture. Drift with a nice kill. Going to try to sprint to stay alive, and unfortunately, he cannot. Atso trying to stay up as well. He knows somebody's capping that red nest. I'm not sure. Oh, they're aware of him. They're going to look to back him down. He got presence on the catwalk and the red nest. Atso interrupt spot, but he's got three teammates in tower looking to push up as well. OS and camo coming up also, so this is a very crucial point in the match. They don't want to just get captures. They need to control the OS and camo. 
Absolutely, it's gonna take power ups and power weapons to beat a team like Buff Shot. I think that unless they're able to change how the early game has gone for them, the score is gonna continue to grow in the favor of Love God, 33 to six. Although, Liga Damal does have control of two strongholds at this exact moment. We're gonna see how long they're able to hold on. Drift still holding on to it. He's got one kill so far. Oh, he does get taken down on top catwalk though. Saiyan looking to pick up the pieces here and he gets one as well. Still keeping up pressure. Saiyan just living. He gets a kill before going down as well. Big plays from him. They're gonna push up on that top cat. You can see they're capping red vest as well, and it's a tower side spawn. So Bound just gonna put down the pressure here from top cat. Give them a double dilemma to work with. This is, oh, Bound's actually not able to get the kill. It's a big play from Liga. They can take back control of catwalk and hopefully keep up this pressure on the red vest. Arctic almost able to pick up both of those kills. Is able to get a player in their shield, and with that, Booba Dubu is able to finish not only one but two. But there's a third player in Red Nest, and Liga Del Mall doing a phenomenal job of getting Red Nest somehow under that much pressure, under that much chaos. They were able to solidify Red Nest. Now they have catwalk control, still contained, and finally some life out of Liga Del Mall here is going to allow them to continue to creep into the score, 21 to 40. Yeah, Liga Del Mall fighting their way back here. Moving up on Blue Ben. Drift's got an opportunity to maybe capture this. He's got to play this carefully, though. He has a teammate with him. The pressure's coming in. They are still getting this capture. Same force to back down. And it looks like they did not manage to grab it. I don't think they didn't grab that Blue Ben. Arctic's now capping Top Catwalk, and they do get Top Catwalk, so you know they're going to fight for Red Nest here. The Rocket's coming up in less than 10 seconds. OS coming up pretty early as well, and the Camo. So Arctic's going to decide to stay back in tower here and wait for an opportunity for Camo. Yeah, this is the right play by Arctic, right? Don't overextend, keep what you got for now, and focus on getting these power-ups and power weapons. Bound and Arctic both pick up kills in doing so, and as soon as these power-ups come up, it feels like the slays go in favor of Love God, but Overshield actually goes in the hands of Asto. He must have snuck in and gotten it. Arctic still playing for camo, finally he's able to pick it up. Is he able to combat this Overshield player with a camo is gonna be the question, because now Rockets go in the favor of Pelo as well. Arctic right now has the camo, all the opportunities for success here. And he's got the rockets as well. Unfortunate rocket though, that one will, you know, no dice for that. But he does have his teammates picking up kills. One more left in the blue bend here, and they grab him as well. That should be a free blue bend capture, but Pelu got a tower spawn. Pelu's already on the catwalk. He's already backing down these players in blue, so great from Pelu though. He gets taken down. I think that's Bound who's trying to fly across the map here. He'll go down. That is Bound, of course. That's a catwalk capture for the side of Liga. They're keeping things relatively close in the midpoint of this game. Yeah, even though I think Arctic played so well with that camera, somehow all of the slays tend to go in Liga Del Mall's favor immediately after the situation at Blue Bend. And with it, Liga Del Mall actually finds themselves with not only catwalk, but Red Ness. And that's a perfect situation right now for them. They're kind of overextending here going for uh, Blue Bend, but a huge one-on-one -on -one from Tapping is going to allow his team to recapture that as Red Ness is lost. Yep, Red Ness is lost. Gained by the red team. Push into that 60 point mark here. Saiyan controlling the catwalk. He spots a player on blue side of security. He's got a teammate there to help him out, so that's an easy kill. He's gonna move over to the blue catwalk here. He's gonna be blocking that spawn point, probably forcing a spawn outside or over in red. You can see all those blue players on the red outside bend here. They're fighting for that red nest. Saiyan somehow putting in some good damage all the way back on the, uh, the blue window here. This is just testament to how great Saiyan is of a shot. He'll get that somebody, out of the big time. somebody has to pay attention to stay in there. He was able to do so much damage without being under fire or like even acknowledged by Liga Del Mall. And because of it, his team's able to win the battle at Red Nest. Yes, they do end up not getting Red Nest, but they all went down in order to kind of keep control of it. And with it, Overshield, Rockets, they all go in the hands of Love God. They have a camo time. It's a little bit later. We know that. And with this, you're gonna see Saiyan try and push towards this camo. Jesse Boobadoobo is gonna make his way towards it, but he goes down. Arctic picks up a nice double in there, and now uh, Catwalk is probably gonna go in the hands of Love God because of all of this chaos. Yeah, this might be for the game here. If Saiyan can, Saiyan can hold on to Catwalk, hold on to Rockets, he's got that remaining OS to work with as well, but he's getting pressure from Red Nest, so some good shots coming in from Liga right there. They're forced to back down outside. One person gonna stay behind in that Red Nest for the rest of them just focus on controlling Blue Bend and Red Nest. An interesting setup to control, but they don't have too many options to work with. Saiyan coming in applying pressure. That's two good kills, three right there. That's a free capture on Red Nest and a dangerous situation for our Liga Del Mal, now forced to spawn in power. 
Yeah, they have to do something. They have to do a quick. And it looks like it's going to have to be catwalk that they go for. But nades are coming in. Multiple players are under duress. But Badoo is able to get the only player that stays in the stronghold out. Saiyan is able to finish up Atso. Turn around. One shot drift for the double killing spree. And with it, total control still remains in Love God's favor. Liga Domal is off against the ropes right now in blue bin. And the pressure is on there. Players continuing to fly. It's been Saiyan still on this killing spree. Oh, man. An unbelievable job by Saiyan there. To completely outplay Pelu. Pelu does get the stronghold, but it's not going to be for long. You really need to take notes on Saiyan's strafe. Saiyan has this like tight, really tricky strafe, and he does it so damn well. Uh, he does it under pressure, and he hits his shots too. But Saiyan's got to be one of the best strafers, I think, in Halo 5. It's just, uh, it's annoying going up against him. The man just manages to live with no resources to his name. But six, four points here as Liga struggles to hold on. They're flying off a of top catwalk, and Saiyan is still lasering them regardless of where they are. The man just doesn't miss. And he's got a great little pinch here to keep him back as we get the final points to take this game. Yeah, just a couple of kills away from a killing frenzy right there. Saiyan doing so much damage. He's going to close this game out for his team. Arctic shooting some nice rockets across the map. Actually, the stronghold goes against Love oh, God hey. there at the very last second. Liga Del Mall stays alive, but it's all for naught. Three go down, and with that, it's going to immediately be traded out. Love God takes the series two to one. Hard fought battle by Liga Del Mal, but Love God will eventually take it. Honestly, every single match, uh, actually, I don't remember the first one too much, but the second match was was crazy from Liga. They, you know, it was pretty lopsided on their favor, and the final match relatively close. So Liga playing lights out right now. They are going to drop into loser side of the bracket, but if they're playing this well against what I would call the God Squad, this uh, Love God squad, uh, then I'm expecting to see more Liga a little bit later in this tournament. So keep your eye on them. Of course, keep your eye on Love God and Saiyan. Saiyan went 22 and 7 in this game with 16 assists. He is statting uh, nearly 3,000 damage as well, a 20.3 KDA, so significantly higher KDA than anybody uh, on his team here. Uh, the man's going off today. Yeah, absolutely. I think after that game two performance, Saiyan really wanted to raise the bar and show us what he was made of. He did just that and allowed his team to kind of run away with game two. Phenomenal job, but like you said, Liga Del Mal, 71. They could have potentially, if a few different power-ups or power weapons go in their favor, they right. potentially could have won that game. Um, and with that, the series, I think Liga Del Mal, uh, with, the, like, with the addition of tapping buttons, is a much stronger force to be reckoned with, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they're able to do yeah. through the loser's bracket. It's not just Liga. We saw no ice in the last series as well. No ice was playing incredible against Fung 4. So I assume these team, two teams might end up facing off uh, later in the loser's bracket. But the winner's bracket will continue to commence. I expect Love God to eventually come up against Fung 4. But we're going to find out when that happens shortly after our break. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.
All right, welcome back. This is it. Winners Finals Esports Arena 5 4v4, one of the most important matchups to watch in this tournament. You're not going to want to miss it because we've got two god squads going up against each other, Wes. We've got Fung 4 featuring Renegade, Frosty, Soul Snipe, and Druck going up against the squad designed to dismantle Fung 4. We got Love God with Arctic Bound, Boo Boo Doo Boo, just saying. I want to know in the chat, I believe we're running polls in the chat on who you think is going to win this. So give me your predictions in the chat as soon as that poll goes up. I'm curious to know uh, what you guys think. Is it going to be 50 50? Is it going to be lopsided Fung 4? Uh, Wes, I want to know your prediction as well. Who do you think is going to take this? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I love the guys on Love God, but it's going to be Fung 4, in my opinion. I think the addition of Frosty is, is so strong, and I know Bubidu is a great addition to this Love God roster, but what I saw from them in that League of Del Mall series, I wanted to see more of. Uh, in order to kind of compete with this juggernaut Fung 4 team, Renegade and Frosty on the same team, like you said at the start of the broadcast, it just doesn't yep. seem fair, and I think that that's what uh, my head kind of goes to. Uh, who do you think? Who do you favor? Are you a 2-0, 2-1? What are you thinking? Um, I'm going to say 2-0, but it wouldn't okay. surprise me if it goes the distance to game three. Okay, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either. I am leaning on Fung 4. Fung 4 has won four tournaments in a row, and it's not a fluke. They now have an upgrade. They got Frosty on their team as well, uh, two-time world champion. So uh, I'm going to say, yeah, either 2-0 or 2-1. I expect each one of these games to be close. I hope they're close. But we're going to kick it off with a Truth CTF uh, real quick. Just going to let you guys know the series layout here. We got Truth CTF. We've got Slayer on the rig coming up after this, and we got Strongholds on Plaza to round things out. Truth CTF. West, kick it off. We're going to be hopping on board with Frosty. And, and like we said, the addition to this Fung 4 roster, they've four peated so far in these Sunday tournaments. And Frosty's going to be soaring top mid. I love this play by Frosty. Something I feel like he always is known for is just soaring to places probably he shouldn't get away with. And then that being said, he doesn't get away with it this time. Bound picks up a double, and Boobadoobo actually takes down Frosty. And with that, that was three early dead for Fung 4. Bound looking like a sneaky beaver here. Going to try to stay alive in this car attic. And it looks like he has somehow succeeded. He's going to put shots at a soul snipe as well. Keep him back on the car side. Somebody's going to have to grab this flag. It looks like they're under too much pressure to do it just yet. Shots at a soul snipe. He's got to win this fight. He doesn't. Soul snipe gets the trade. And that's big from him to keep that pressure back and stop them from pulling this flag early on. Absolutely. And somehow, some way, Funk 4 is able to slay out of their base right there. I really did think that that was going to be Love God's opportunity to get a nice flag pull in after getting three early dead. Fortunately, 
for Fung 4 fans, they were unable to do so because of the slays that came out from the car side. Frosty doing a great job. Drug doing a great job. Soul Snipe also picking up a kill of his own. And with that, it looks like it's just going to be a battle for map control early on. Yeah, Druck using or looking to wield this uh, green magnet of a weapon. We'll see if he pulls it back out once again. But for now, he's just going to hold on to this position. It looks like Fung 4 early on are under a lot of pressure here. I haven't really seen them cross that 50-yard line. And you can see those blue players flying into red face. They already got a back smack. That's Saiyan pushing up. Oh, no, doesn't get the kill on Frosty. It's a big clutch from Frosty and a back smack as well to stop that cap in its tracks. He'll get the return also. Right, the return comes in. That was three dead for love god you see boobadoo in the window here he's going to be the last player alive uh for just a second from love god love god all spawning cars out of the map it's going to kind of opt to go in front of the base and i believe that they're underneath the base behind him yes they are that's going to be saying that's an interesting play by saying that i think potentially could have worked but frosty smelled it out and kind of played it slow in order to wait for his team to help him Druck, renegade both pick up kills but the kills don't matter if the fight's on the other side of the map as Frosty goes down. Soul Snipe also taken out, and I believe the return comes in. A little bit of an overextension, and uh, yeah. uh, rule number one is always come back with the flag in Halo, and it looks like Druck and Renegade both forgot that rule uh, for that first cast. Looks like speaking of roles, Boo Boo ah, was the camo guy. He does get taken down. A quick note about that pink side flag run, though, Wes, is uh, while you're forcing a car bubble spawn, if you don't have somebody blocking that bottom base spawn, it's a very prevalent spawn point. So you can get players spawning out in bottom base, even when Frosty right now is up on top of it. So as long as you got somebody going through the bottom, which it looks like they do, they can block out that spawn. Somebody looking for the flank that's bound, he gets taken down. The flag being pulled, and it's out front. It looks like Blue's going to stop this for now. Yeah, it's three dead right now for Funk 4. So this flag is all for naught. And I love this play by saying to try and get underneath the base and allow and apply some pressure here. But Frosty immediately gets off the spawn and understands that Saiyan is doing that and is able to take him out. Druck and Renegade both pick up kills themselves. So it's continuously three dead for each side as they continuously soar into the base of the other team. Which wow. team is going to come out on top? It looks like Frosty going to allow his team an opening with that perfect kill, but he's removed from the map as well. It's a two-on-two -two right now. And although we see Renegade pick up a kill, he's taken down it as well. So just trades and just such high level coming out of both teams right now from Mud God and Funk 4. This is a great opportunity to witness some high level Halo uh, from everyone involved right now. I think this is potentially the best Halo we've seen since the ACS World Championship with the lead, with the likes of Boobadoo Say and Renegade and Frosty all in yeah. one match. Yeah, I don't think we've seen this level of talent uh, up against each other for years, actually. So it's uh, pretty amazing to see in a tournament format here. And Druck just somehow living in the front of the base, being a pest. He's now going to jump up. Shots into Boo Boo as well. You know he's got to win this fight. And he does. He's got to stay up here because that enemy team is spawning up in the car bubble. He's got teammates with him to run the flag. Found or Druck now going to push up and keep that pressure up. Somebody might have to overextend here unless they get the defense. Mm. Boo Boo coming in. A nice five kill or five uh, shot trade right there. But Frosty's still keeping up the pressure. He wants this flag pole. They spotted you. Yeah, Frosty is going to be able to pull this flag, but the slays need to go in favor, and he's able to get one of his own. So that's going to allow him to start this actual flag run. Getting it to pink one without being touched is huge, and it looks like they kind of learned their lesson the last time around, and they're going to anchor back to the base with him. That's a great job by Soul Snipes to kind of learn on the fly that, yeah, we need to go back with the fly to make sure that Love God isn't flying across the map in order to kill him. Frosty punches in the first flag cap and a 1 0 lead for Funk Ford. Yeah, try, try, try again, and eventually you might get away with one flag cap. And it looks like the pressure's still on. Frosty get a dive under base with Renegade chasing down this kill. That's Arctic trying to stay alive, and of course he can't. That's two players on him. Shots into Saiyan as well, and Frosty winning that exchange. They already got two caps. West, I, I somehow missed the second cap. Frosty's looking for a third here as he keeps the pressure up on blue base. Melee into Boo Boo. Shots into Arctic. Ooh. Don't kill him, and he does. That's a double from Frosty before going down. Renegade will keep that up, and Mikey now in the top of the base. This is rough for no god or for love god. No god seems no god. to be with them right now <laughs> because they have had zero control ever since Frosty ran that first flag. And with it, they were able to kind of to turn that into a double cap situation in a sense because Love God has been trying to get control of their base, pushing him from car for multiple spawns. Now it feels like they may have done that, but it may have been too late. Two caps have already gone in, and now Love God still fighting for a little bit of map control. Yeah, Love 
Smoke got with two crucial kills right there, though. Bound gonna sneak under the base. Actually, it looks like he's deciding whether or not to go attic or under the base. These players have already pushed up the top. It's a bound in an interesting position right here. Gets a crucial kill onto Renegade, but he's gonna play this patiently. He knows there's somebody under the base as well. Bound flying up to get the kill on Frosty, and he does say in staying alive as well. Now Bound pushing through toilet. This is a great double team right here. A chance for a flag pull. They know it's a carbine spawn, but they gotta cut this off if they wanna make this work. You can see somebody flying through the window. Bound in tow right here, looking to keep up the pressure. They might be able to get away with this if they can continue to hit these shots. Yeah, Bound's gonna spot Renegade trying to be sneaky front the base and make a play on this flag run, but it's not gonna be enough. And that flag is gonna go in. And they're gonna have an opportunity themselves at a double cap because nobody for Fung 4 decided to go back to wow. the base. They all tried to overextend. And now Bound, being in a perfect position to pull that flag, is gonna have to deal with one player that is still alive. His pink side, if they're able to get this kill, this flag could be the tiebreaker, but it doesn't look like they're going to because multiple members soar into pink. That player did just enough pink side the base to stall bound pink two and wait for his team to fly in and get that reach. I was gonna say somebody's got to kill bound and they finally did. Now Boo Boo's the one staying alive here. Flags out on pink side. Soul Snipe trapped like a rat. Nothing he can do there. Boo Boo's gonna pick up the flag and want to punch this one in. But you know that red team's gonna be overextending through car side. So can you win the race here? That player flying in. That's Druck with the defense. Boo Boo gonna drop the flag temporarily. He's got a teammate with him. They should have this flag capped. He's got the defense in front of him. And there you go. We have a match clutch. Yeah, what was just a 2-0 game is immediately traded to a 2-2 game and similar formula, right? One team was able to double cap and then the next team gets control and they're pretty much able to double cap. It wasn't the prettiest double cap and yeah, there was a return involved in the middle of it, but the control was never lost in between the two caps. And now, Ubudubu on a killing spree, picks up a kill, picks up the flag, found picks up a kill of its own and this could be the third and final flag cap that takes Love God into the into the lead in the series going up 1-0 man boo boo were you playing mcc or were you secretly grinding h5 because it looks like he hasn't left for a day here they're still looking to grab this flag Sane gets the touch they got two crucial slays that should be a game and somehow love god despite being down 2-0 makes a three cap comeback to win game one you gotta love it damn you give these guys map control and they can run with it and they're gonna be running the flags with that as well unbelievable comeback and like you said, down 2-0 in this game. For them to figure out a formula to score three flags as fast as they did, it just is testament to how good these guys are at Halo 5 and the level that they can play at when given the opportunity. Let me make my rounds here, Wes. I got to give some shout outs. Uh, shout out to Bound going 20 and 17. Man slaying. He was uh, such a nuisance as well. I think he was uh, one of the most annoying players because he would constantly get under red base and get up from behind them, get these uh, these crucial flank kills and then stay alive. He's such an annoying kill. Uh, you know, Frosty, Renegade playing really well. Both of them going 21, 16, 21, 15. But Soul Snipe, an unfortunate game for him. 9 and 18. He does get 14 assists, but you know, all four members of these teams need to pull their weight. They need to all be playing lights out uh, if they want to win these games. And right now, it just looks like Love God is the team that's performing. I worry about that for Soul Snipe, right? It's like I've seen him perform pretty well against all of these teams so far throughout these weekends of Halo. But I always question how far and how does that compare to the players uh, that are in the HCS finals, right? Yeah. And now we're starting to see one team that has multiple players that have all been competing at a high level. Uh, having like the worst player on your team be Arctic is means your team is really, really good and individually skilled. So, um, we see Soul Snipe having success against lesser teams, but now that the individual skill is kind of raised the bar with the team love god is he able to hang and statistically speaking in game one he was the one that struggled the most well we'll see you can slay in rig slayer here and it looks like frosty's the first one with the opportunity he's got a sniper in hand player pushing him but he goes red bar big for frost to stay alive but he does get taken down that sniper's down as well and boo boo playing like a sneaky bugger yet he is that's three slays there too and a bunker spawn i believe if they can force a bunker spawn here that's a, a very oppressive spawn point but it looks like they're going for carbine instead and boo boo knows exactly how to play it he's just gonna wait in the long haul and pick up these easy shoddy kills yeah this is exactly textbook by boo boo right he's and if you have a player that's willing to play patient and slow like boo boo doo boo it screams uh that kind of play style for me so it doesn't oh. actually end up paying off as he gets taken down and bound actually was snipe so no matter how perfect these players might be able to play, sometimes Funk 4 will just be able to find the answer, right? They're that good. 
eight to seven. This game is highly contested early on, even though both power weapons went in the favor of Love God early on. Osek Punk 4 has done a phenomenal job of being able to uh, get rid of that situation and find the hands, uh, the snipe in the hands of Renegade. I don't think we've seen enough Renegade today. If we can grab him before he, you know, maybe drops that snipe, I want to see this man go off. Uh, Renegade, of course, sniper in hand. There we go, switching onto screen. Three shots remaining. I've seen Renegade hit all three of these with beautiful headshots. So uh, just wait and see here as he stays in bunker. This is a pretty safe place to stay with the snipe. It's a nice anchor position, but he'll push up, get the body. Nice kill on the bound. He's still looking for more blood here, but he's got his teammates in front of him and they'll do the dirty work. Very dangerous situation right here for Love God. Camo is coming up. Renegade is securing oh kills around there. And with it, a great snipe from Renegade, and he hunts down Bound as well with a grenade. Camo being the priority on the map right now. It's going to be Renegade just knowing that these players are distracted by the Camo coming up. He's going to be pressing them from the side, and the killing spree comes in. Three straight kills for Funk 4, and Bound decides to jump off the map. He doesn't want to play anymore without his teammate. <laughs> and with that, 16-9. to nine. What was once a one-kill game is now 16-9, to nine, and that's due to the hands and the fact that Renegade just dominated. Well, Druck on our POV right now. He's got a camo teammate beside him. We'll see what he can uh, do to work with that player. Of course, he does end up going down. Renegade up on top tower. He knows there's a player there on the basement window. He's opting to push up here. That player's still under him on basement window. It should be a clean kill for Renegade, but he can't pick it up just yet. He'll fly it unbound. There's the kill. 18 to 13 at this point. Still relatively close, and I'd say anyone's game, but you know Fun 4 can slay, and once they get away with it, it, there's kind of no coming back. It's wild to me that when we watch these two teams go at it, like when a power up or a power weapon is coming up, look at the focus that everyone on the map has. That everyone on the map is around this sniper right now. Everyone was around camo, and I love that. The like, the team situations that you run into that like literally dictate how this game is going to go revolves around these powers and power weapons. And love God has done it. They have formulated the plan to get the snipe in the hands of Bound, and that is a recipe for success. Yeah, Bound with the snipe, eight shots. A lot of opportunities here if he plays this carefully. Looks like he's gonna rotate to Nest. He's got teammates around him too that hopefully will steal some of the aggro here. But Bound, gonna whiff the first shot. His teammate push it up here. Bound needs to thread the needle and he gets the body. It's pretty big from him. That player is gonna back off and stay alive here. And I like that Bound's gonna rotate. This is a good play for Bound. He was alone on Nest. He could back up, maybe get himself into Bunker, but it looks like the camo is coming up soon. He doesn't want to drop back too quickly because he's getting headshots regardless of where he is. I want to see a spring jump. We're going to get it up the top tower. Player right in front of him. We'll see if he can get the no scope. He's going to take his time. That's a kill on Renegade. Camo coming up as well as Bound just keeps up the pressure on this bunker spawn. Somebody's got to grab it. This is the opportunity for Love God to make that comeback. Yeah, they need that camo. And I think both teams right now are going to need this camo because whichever team gets it, going to pretty much be able to have the opportunity to separate themselves. We saw a killing spree out of Renegade earlier with the snipe. Now we're seeing one out of Bound. It's a great answer and why this game is so highly contested right now. Bound, knowing that he wants to close this series out in just two games, is, get is giving his team the opportunity to do so. And a great double kill off screen by Saiyan as the rest of his team is collapsing on the rest of the players for Funk 4. It's going to open up the lead to be extended to 6. I, I gotta give credit to Bound for the reason that they're winning right now. Uh, Bound has just been staying alive. He's been flanking constantly. He's been hitting his snipes, and finally he does go down. So that's uh, that was a thorn in the side of Fung 4 for such a damn long time, and uh, long enough for Saiyan to get the shotty. Only one more shot left to the chamber of this one, though, and you know he's going to play it patiently. There it is. Right to Soul Snipe. Solo player up on Red Nest. He's likely going to die. I don't think Druck can live in this situation, but hopefully he can get a kill before he goes down. No dice. 33 to 24. Love God was designed to destroy Fung 4 and Wes, it might just happen. Yeah, absolutely. We saw a killing spree out of bound and that followed suit by saying the entire Love God roster now picks up kills on the kill feed. And 36 to 24, this game is starting to get out of hand with the map control and the camo or, or the power weapons, I would say. You've seen how the second half of this game has just gone heavily in the favor of Love God. When they have control, they know what to do with it. They can steamroll teams when given the opportunity and that's exactly what we're seeing saying doing a phenomenal job of continuously controlling the positions he needs to
we're getting to that point where it's almost unwinnable. Now, mm. I know Drunk can make this comeback. He, if he grabs this snipe and he's able to stay alive with it, maybe get some kills, we could have a turnaround. But look at him just stabilize across the map here. I think that's Renegade who has snipe. We gotta get on POV with Renegade and see if he can pull off the clutch play. If anybody's gonna clutch up, you know it's Renegade. He's already got a double. He's in that long haul and he's gonna look for some food here. There's the first. I believe there's a player behind him. I'm not sure if that player is still alive or if he was taken out oh. and he gets assassinated and I believe to be it's correct. Bad. That's a huge kill from Bound, even though he immediately gets traded out. Getting the snipe out of the hands of Renegade is vitally important. And because of it, now someone on the map has, uh, no one on the map has that snipe and you have that six kill lead to comfortably sit with. Renegade could have potentially brought his team back in this game. Fortunately for Bound, he was able to take him out. Bound has completely ruined Fun Force game plan. They're back against the wall now. You can see Soul Snipe flying up, trying to get some kills here. It is still somewhat close. There is a chance to make that comeback, and Soul Snipe gets some crucial kills as well. But 42 to 37, make that 38. That's a double from Soul Snipe. He goes with the player outside. He's got to live up. He's got somebody to his right as well. Don't tell me that's bound again. We'll find out. Looks like that player decided to uh, to leave him for now. Soul Snipe going to have to join the fray here in the center of the map as we get down to the end of this game. So close at this point, though. Only four kills separating these teams. Yes. Unbelievable job by Bound or by Soul Snipe here to keep his team in the game. He's still on this killing spree, but he needs to start impacting the end of this game. He does actually end up going down, and that was a careless little, a little bit of a careless death there. But Frosty's able to capitalize on the player that took him out. You cannot continue to see kills traded in the favor of Love God if you're a Fung 4 fan. Frosty's able to once again trade a kill out, but they're still down three. And with four kills to go, you need to figure out a way to stop that from formulating. Love God had a massive lead, and that is no longer. Just three kills separating these teams. Mm. Foxy is not missing. That's a big kill from him with the shot. He's got one more left in the chamber as well, and they know there are players over on engine, so Frosty's gonna look to collapse here. Shotty in hand, that's a big kill as well. Two kills separating these teams, now one, and we're down to the wire. Wes in the final four and final three kills in this second game. Yeah, I believe there's a camo coming up, but do the players, does everyone on the map know what time this camo is? Or is it just one team that has an idea of what time camo is? Jesse, you see Boo Boo is gonna be standing out on the nest. Frosty's gonna end up trying to get damage onto both these players. A nice nade that I thought potentially could have landed a kill there. Uh, ends up narrowly missing that player. And Frosty needs to play his life a little bit safer because now Saiyan has taken him down and with that it could potentially open up the map. Drug's gonna get double teamed here. He can't get this kill. That's massive. Renegade wins his fight. One kill separating these teams. If they stay up, they can make this happen. You can see both of those players on desk. Renegade looking for some sort of a flank from Renegade. below. This is actually a great position for no, Renegade. No, no, no. Up there on the box. He's got to back down, though. Got to stay alive. <laughs> Wait. The map here. He's hiding. They don't know exactly where he is. And the pressure oh. coming in from Renegade. Oh. He doesn't win the fight. Bound clutches up. That's a huge kill from Bound and a series win for Love God. I... I gotta be honest, I hate that positioning by Renegade, but unbelievable job by Love God to close that game out. Bunk 4 did everything they could to bring it back, and Soul Snipe having a great Game 2 performance after the poor Game 1 performance to try and bring his team into a Game 3, but it just wasn't enough. 18 assists come from Drux, so I believe everybody in this game playing at such a high level and showing us what they got, but Love God advancing 2-0 is a shocking surprise after Fung Force 4 beat. Is it on the ropes? Is this the end of the Fung 4 dynasty that we've kind of seen take over these past few weekends? Love God thinks so. The, the crazy thing is we can't even say that yet, right? Because this is what we got last week. Last week, right? the Renegade team, they lost winner's finals, but somehow they came back, they reset the bracket, and then they won again. So anything could happen with this Fung 4 squad. They know how to clutch up, so you can't count them out, out of the uh, running. But man, uh, that scoreboard, uh, you know, everybody really popping off, but Bound, Bound made some huge, huge plays. He went 18 and 14 overall. Uh, you know, some great damage from him. Most damage in the lobby, actually, uh, 2007, 81. Uh, it was just his flanking. He got behind enemy lines. Renegade had snipe there, and that was that moment where Renegade was clawing his way back, but bound getting into long haul, getting that back smack, uh, honestly sealed the deal on any momentum they had there. Yeah, I think that one back smack on a Renegade when Renegade had snipe really opened up the game for his team. I'm not sure they would have had that same lead to play with if he doesn't get that kill on a Renegade. So right. unbelievable play by Bound there. And in doing so, he allowed his team to go up 2-0 and advance to the finals. So that's it for our winner's bracket for now. At least uh, that was winner's finals. That means that Frosty's, uh, sorry, Frosty's team, I guess, is going down to losers. They got to fight their way through the loser's bracket as I expect them to do. 
uh, and love God makes it, they're sitting pretty in grand finals. So we got a bit of a different turn of events. Fung Four are fighting from the back foot, but we got plenty more teams in the loser's bracket. Uh, I, I heard something about giveaways. Is that correct? Just want to confirm that. I think we got a, we do have some giveaways. Guys, make sure to type exclamation mark giveaway in the chat right now for your chance to win a Game Pass Ultimate. Now, Game Pass Ultimate comes with Game Pass on PC, Game Pass on Xbox, and Xbox Live all in one package. Pretty good deal for just typing exclamation mark giveaway in the chat. So uh, make sure you do that. You're entered to win a one-month trial to, uh, <laughs> to Xbox. Is it, it's got to be Ultimate. It says Xbox Game Pass Standard. I'm just going to assume it's Ultimate, uh, which, is, which is the real thing you want. Yeah, so it is Ultimate. So make sure to type that giveaway. You're going to find out in chat who wins that. In the meantime, we're going to go for a break. We'll be back with the loser's bracket. we got plenty more coming up, so don't go anywhere.
sniper rifles ready.
And we're back, Esports Arena, H5-4s, 1K on the line, and we're now jumping into the loser's bracket. We're about to jump into loser's quarters. The two teams we are going to be watching is uh, No Ice, featuring JKV, Brainstorm, Goldstar, and Jared, up against All Stars, featuring Sep Stars, Rhyme Gel, Rorzich, who I believe we're calling Roach, and uh, Laylocks. So pretty good matchup. Let's take a look at the bracket as well. You can see it up on screen here, uh, just a sense of how, we, how far we've come. In this tournament, uh, Fung 4, 2 0, 2 0, and then 0 and 2. They got beat by Love God in the winners' finals. So, Love God, despite struggling in winners' semis, they came back strong in winners' finals. They're now sitting pretty in the grands. And now you can also see the losers' bracket as well. We got All Stars who defeated Cutting Edge to go up into this uh, this play or this uh, match with All Stars and No Ice. And then uh, Chosen Legacy Team Swindle appear to still be in here whoever wins that is going to go up against liga del mal also a heavy hitter in this tournament uh just previously before the break there was a pretty heavy hitter on t uh sorry team on screen as well so great to see so much talent in this tournament now wes if you remember uh no ice played exceptionally well against fung four they uh they almost won uh you know they were very close games yeah absolutely i expect uh, no ice to put on a very strong performance here and it's no shock uh, to see All Stars make it this far either, but in my opinion, this could be the end of the road for them, right? I think No Ice showed me that they have what it takes to make it to the loser semis, and yeah, and I think that that is probably what we're going to see here in this series, unless All Stars just comes out gunslinging, guns blazing, and, and making plays that I don't expect them to be able to make against this No Ice roster. Curious to know what you guys think in the chat. We should have predictions coming up in the chat so you can vote on the poll uh, whether or not you think it's going to be All-Stars or No Ice winning this upcoming series. Uh, I think I'm going to side with uh, No Ice, Wes. Um, and before I ask for your prediction, I'm just going to check the format real quick. It looks like we are starting with Strongholds Eden. This is round seven. So we got Strongholds Eden, Slayer Regret, Capture the Flag on Fathom to round it out. Uh, Wes, who do you think is going to take this? Yeah, I, I, I think we'd be wrong if we were going to say anything other than no ice just because of how strong they played there in the winner's bracket i think watching them play earlier it was a bit of a surprise to an extent and i would be shocked to not see them almost have an opportunity at a rematch right. or or to play some of these other great teams in this in this tournament and put up similar performances um i mean gold star vr is always um always gonna I feel like he's always going to make it at least to the semifinals. So yeah. without that, um, I'd be shocked. Man's a constant threat for sure. And uh, we'll see if he can maintain that uh, that threatening persona in our strongholds. Eden, of course, OS, Camo, Rockets, a lot to pay attention to and a lot to control here. Wes, I'll let you have it. Yeah, absolutely. Starting off, we're going to start off with Seth Stars. He's a member of the All-Stars. And we haven't really seen this team play as of today, but they're honestly starting off pretty well as they get that overshield off the map. JK, he is going to have to burn it, but he was two teammates, uh, three teammates, as he tries to jump into Blue Bin. Now, so, try as he might, as might as he, as he gets control of Blue Bin, what is it going to cost him and the rest of his team? Because he now loses the one-on-one. -on -one. Rockets are still up, and Blue Bin is now being traded in favor of No Ice. So, yes, you did get Blue Bin at the start step stars, but what did it cost you? It costed you what it looks like, total control of the map, both power-ups and potentially Rockets as well go to the other team for a brief moment. There are three currently dead as JK does get a double and trade with the Rockets. So it looks like All-Stars was able to come off their spawn and get the kills they needed in order to get rid of this total control. But there's already 14 points on the board and it's less than a minute in the game. 
On top of that, Nova was forced to back down. They reset the nest, nest capture and they still got a trip cap. So we're now passing the 20 point mark. And it's just rough for Noble. They do get two crucial kills, so this should give him an opening for that nest capture. You can see he's got a teammate with him to cap that. So nice way to stop the bleeding here, but the man needs to live up if they want any hope of capturing that catwalk. I think that was Camo that just flew past his face. That might have been a teammate. Uh, regardless, it looks like they got an advantage in slays here. Let's see them take that catwalk. Yeah, they need to do something. They need to do a quick because 26 points already on the board. Yes, they are starting to claw away at that lead, but it's going to take a trip cap in order to kind of come back in this game quickly, right? It's going to take multiple minutes of holding these strongholds, which I'm not sure they're going to be capable of against the no ice roster. I want to see them have that same opportunity for a total control in order to balance out what they gave up at the start of this game. It does look like they need to get the reset on Red Nest, and I'm not sure if Sepstars is going to be able to make his way over there. It does find a nice little route there, and I love this by Sepstars because that was actually a very important reset of Red Nest. But as soon as he gets there, there's multiple players in Catwalk, and now it seems like he's having to fight multiple battles at once. Yeah, it was a good live from Sepstars, but he didn't accomplish the ultimate objective, and that was to get the OS and take it out of Jared's hands because oh. what's happened? Man's got a double. I think he might still have one rocket. Even if he doesn't, he's a threat. That's the triple for UEG. Jared, as he flies up on these outside right. players, uh, and I, I think the pressure's going to continue here. Yeah, uh, a little bit of an overextension there by Jared, yeah. but I think he can get away with it as his team once again has total control. And what you thought was All-Stars crawling back into this game is now just being overextended with the second set of power-ups and power weapons. Jared doing a phenomenal job with that overshield at the start of that in order to build the lead back up. It's now across the halfway mark as they reach 50. And finally, All-Stars is able to get rid of that and start scoring points of their own. Definitely a nice double cap from All-Stars right there. It looks like they actually managed to secure the catwalk again. No, they didn't. That player tried to dive in. He was too late. And there's a quick capture on catwalk to keep that lead in the favor of Brainstorm and team here. And just live it. Making himself such a hard kill. He's got two players with him on the alley. He knows that Nest is now a threat, so he can put the damage in and just try to stay up here as his teammate pushes up. That's JKB who's going to go down. And a big kill from Blue right there to just stop the bleed and get some points of their own. Absolutely. And that's what they're going to need to do, but... It feels like the, the slays aren't really heavily in the favor of either team, uh, I would think. I mean, obviously, I think No Ice is outplaying them at this point, but not by enough of a margin to separate themselves by 30. The difference is in the total control, and then when All-Stars has control of the map, they're only able to get two strongholds. That really is resulting in this scoreline. Definitely a good point. On top of that, they're not really too efficient with the power-ups, the uh, the rockets as well, and hopefully they can start to do that because uh, it looks like they are getting some good slays here. Gold Star forced to back down. They should be able to capture that catwalk, and that's our first trip cap from All Stars at the perfect time in the match to do it. They got to make sure they get this camo, this OS, and rockets. Absolutely. This next set of overshot and rockets can either make or break this run that they are on. They currently have total control. But they've, they're going to lose it now that they've given up this overshot and this set of rockets to uh, JK right here. So I love this play by him. He's going to immediately make sure that they don't have a camo player on the map. He gets a double kill, potentially a triple kill here. But Gold Star is going to get that one from him. But Red Nest, Catwalk, they belong to no ice right now. Yeah, and that actually is another trip cap, just turning things right around. I do like that All-Stars managed to get a pretty significant amount of points to kind of narrow the scoreline, but now that they're trip capped on, that might all be for nothing. 67 and counting, they got the blue bend to stop the bleeding, but JK's down, Jared pushing up now, and oh my god, that Nate didn't do any damage, but it looks like he's uh, backed him up for now. Absolutely. I mean, that trip cap was so important for all sorts of crawl back into this game. It's just more important for them now to find their footing and to once again get, get two strongholds under control. Being down by 20 is much different than the 35-40 that we've seen them in this game so far. And I want to see them kind of get a grasp for it. They're trying to get Red Nest right now, but Seth Stars is going to get taken down by Jurgen. And with that, a double kill. And he's just being such a nuisance. He's going to be able to make his way up to Red Nest once again and get them out by the time they've even captured it. So phenomenal routing here Ooh. by Jared. And I love the shots, the ball. Yeah, Jared's saving that capture with a nice clean five. They're maintaining that trip cap as well. That player is going to go down in catwalk. Actually, nice kill from him to stay alive a little longer. And uh, Jared taking a lot of damage here, forced down to one shot. But that player is going to have to back down the tower. This could be it for the game here. We're getting to that point where it's just about impossible. I'm going to call it. That's a game oh. on the side of no ice. A pretty dominant match from there.
Absolutely. Picking up right where we saw them in Winner's Bracket. Unfortunately, they ran into the, some juggernauts in Winner's Bracket, but they're going to make slight work of All-Stars here in Game 1. All-Stars yeah. did so some signs of life, but not enough to take the game. And with that, Game 1 going in their favor. And now we see All-Stars with their backs against the wall going into Game 2. Jared was on our POV quite a lot, and for good reason. He went 15, 7, and 7 with the most damage in the entire lobby. Uh, so great place from Jared there. His team, no slouch as well. Everyone getting upwards of 10 kills. Can't say the same thing for All-Stars. Uh, unfortunate and understandable. It's hard to keep up the slays if you don't have map control. But they're not out yet. It's a best of three series. They still got another shot at this. And as I switch to Observer, I'm also going to check that format real quick and see what we're up against here. Just wait for it. Damn menu system. I'm going to wait and see when that thing that is uh, ready. In the meantime, on our format, we've got Regret Slayer coming up next. We haven't seen that yet, Wes. This is a, a pretty chaotic matchup to have for Slayer. Could be a very quick series for All-Stars right now if they're not able to start off hot and get control of these overshields. We saw a majority of the overshields in the middle and the second half of that game go in favor of no ice. And because of it, I think they were able to run away with the game a little bit easier. Um it's vitally important that they're able to control the power-ups, especially on a map like Regret, because that overshield, there's only one counter to it, and that's the Plasma Pistol. And if you don't have that, he's a handful to deal with. We're going to have to see who wins that opening strat. Like you said, it's so damn crucial. It could amount to 8 kills, 10 kills. I've seen some crazy momentum swings off of one OS grab, and of course the combo as well, like you said, a huge threat to counter it. So... We're going to have to find out. No Ice right now has been playing pretty damn well this entire tournament. And, uh, it, you know, if, if that last game is telling of anything, this might be a bit of a blowout. But uh, I'm rooting for All-Stars to give us a good fight here. Yep. Regret Slayer is the name of the game. All-Stars, your backs are against the wall. We'll see what you have here. Very fast map. If you get all four dead, it's very easy to trap this, that Definitely. team and, and spiral this game out of control. So you want to make sure that you're able to keep at least some footing on the map at all times in order to prevent that from happening. And it looks like No Ice has all four players bottom middle. They're going to pick up the Overshield to begin with. But the Overshield player, I guess, gets burned. And with that, All-Stars 4-0 and zero to start this game out. That's all four dead. And we're going to see what they're able to do with this. And they got the combo in hand. That's Noble, who somehow managed to grab combo, make his way all the way over to pink side to keep the pressure up on blue base. So this is the exact start that you'd hope to see from All-Stars if they want to claw their way back. You can see those red players in blue. They're trapped like rats, and Noble staying alive. He lands the combo, but he can't afford to push just yet. I like the patient play from Noble here. He's got a teammate up on car as well with the pinch, but somebody gets behind him, and that's the thing you got to pay attention to is the moment you apply pressure to blue, you open up the red base spawn. You've got to be ready to turn around. Yeah, absolutely. And fortunately for All-Stars, it looks like they were able to turn that first four kills into the, the spawn kills that they needed and the trap that they needed in order to resemble a 10 to 4 lead. This is an unbelievable lead for them to be able to have right now as long as they're able to play with it and trade it out accordingly from here on out. They should be able to take this to a game three. Unfortunately for them, it gets narrowed down to four uh, without any kills coming in until that kill we just witnessed on screen. Noble's going to take out Brainstorm and extend the lead back to five. Goldstar's going to try to stay alive here, but three players looking at him, taking a lot of the aggro. He goes down. Jared with the sneaky play here. He'll get the melee, but doesn't land enough shots. He's now flipping. He does get the kill. That's big from Jared to stay alive, but getting a little overzealous. Gets taken down shortly after, but JK will clean that up. So we got trades across the board here. Still a five kill lead on the side of All Stars, but we got the OS coming up soon. They're going to want to prep for it. Absolutely. I think this overshield coming up could dictate how this mid game goes. The first one did get burned. I'm going to see what is All Stars playing because it didn't really feel like they prioritized overshield at the start. They just wanted to burn it and then. On the other hand, Ooh. no ice sent all four players for overshield last time around. So it'll be very interesting to see, is that the same uh, strategy that All-Stars tries to, to play around? Because that's uh -oh. a dangerous strategy to go around. All-Stars fighting hard to stay alive here. They did get the OS. That's huge from Noble. Staying up. He's taking a lot of shots. He doesn't have too much left of it. But just the fact that he grabbed it is a massive clutch from Noble right here. Flying in, looking for a back smack. Pressure comes in. One more victim in the bottom of Blue Base. And he does manage to stay up. They got the Plasma Pistol as well. So All-Stars just prioritizing all of the most important aspects of this threat Slayer. And it's definitely paying off. It's a big kill for Playlux. It's just as important not to let no ice get the overshot as it is to get the overshot. That was a phenomenal job by All-Stars, and they've got this lead up to nine. This plasma pistol has been done 
has been doing a ton of work in the hands of Laylock, and I love this because they were ready to take down the overshield player in case uh, no ice was able to capture that. Laylock's doing it to a perfection right here on Regret Slayer, controlling the one weapon that could counter the one situation that could bring this team back. I saw Roach trying to land that spring jump there. Just a little bit too much momentum. He bounced under the bridge, but it didn't matter. He had teammates in the right positions. And uh, at this point, this is a massive lead for All-Stars. What the heck is going on in Regret Slayer here? But I thought no ice uh, had no ice. I, it looks like they're, they're fumbling a little. Yeah, absolutely. This is a completely different team in All-Stars than we saw in game one. No objective to worry about. They only have to worry about slays, and they're getting the slays done. 32 to 21, what was a hot start from them has continued to the mid game and with that just an eight kill lead right now as it was once just 11 when i started uh that kind of rant but still it's almost an insurmountable odds like um uh, or like lead to, to give away on a map like regret i feel there's no real way to separate yourselves unless you get total control if you're no ice and it doesn't look like all stars is going to give them that Hard to say, Wes. I find that this is such a momentum-based map. You can see a massive kill swing uh, at any second, and it's really going to come down to that OS, which it seems like Brainstorm is not even thinking about right now. The blue players are on the bottom of the base, and I think Laylox might have picked up that OS, which is massive from him. No, it's not Laylox, because Laylox is dead. That's Noble right now on screen, pushing up on the bridge. He's got a teammate with him. Shots into Gold Star as well, and he'll win that exchange. And that's huge. That's a 10-kill lead. Yeah, it's interesting. We saw All-Stars prioritize or not really prioritized power-ups last game but this game is a completely different story they're picking up just about every single ogre shield other than the first one which they forced a burn on and because of it i think that they've been able to have so much success it's great to see a team be able to kind of recognize how they messed up in game one and that immediately see the corrections made in game two and have success because so now at this point, I'd say we're getting to that realm where it might be, uh, you know, just about unwinnable. When you have six kills left and a 12 kill lead as well, make that 11, but 44 on the side of blue. Jared's gonna have to go off right here and he'll start by flying to red. That's a blue base spawn now. You'll see him flip around immediately and control pink side. It looks like he's gonna play it slow. They might be able to live long enough to play for that next OS, but uh, we'll see how things play out here. Maybe if they slow play it, they can turn things around. Yeah, it, it would have to be perfect able from here on out. And Fortunately, I'm not sure that's what we're going to witness as the 47th kill comes yeah. in. 47, 37, another player spotted no shield. Noble's not even going to over extend for it because he knows that he'd have to drastically mess up in order to lose this game. Picks up a 48th kill top middle with his teammate. And with that, I think we're going to see the final two come in here with a push. Having seen all players on observer mode of red, they're all trapped in the base. And with that, Laylocks and Noble pick up the last two. 50, 47 to take this to a game three. 50 37 actually 37. That's a, a dominant, dominant win from all stars and i was not expecting that to happen but uh that's that's great honestly that means we get a game three that means we got a real series on our hands here west uh, and you got to hand it to that os control especially from noble and laylocks they popped off on the scoreboard 15 and 9 from noble 14 and 10 from laylocks leading the pack uh leading the pack in damage as well so uh great stuff from all stars bouncing back and they actually got a shot at this series Absolutely, they have a shot. They have more than a shot after that game, too. I think if they're able to replicate that kind of, uh, like, just established dominant map control and power weapon and power up control like they were in that game, too, they're going to find a very successful recipe for game three. Even though we know how strong no ice is, this all-star team is looking like they can play at that level. Now, speaking of game three, it looks like it's going to be CTF on Fathom. So going to be curious to see how this one plays out. Just waiting on uh, Jared as soon as he's ready. We're going to jump into this game. But Fathom CTF, I've seen this go the distance. I've seen it go to overtime. I've seen it get replayed, but I've also seen it end in about two minutes. Uh, it could definitely go either way. Would you give a, an edge to anyone going into this? I've got to see it to believe it uh, from sure. All-Stars to know that they can win an objective against this No Ice team. But I, I think that they're more than capable. I'm going to give a slight edge to No Ice for the objective game. Uh, right. Just having seen the dominant performance that they had in game one. Um, but that being said, I think this is a heavily contested match, and I think anyone's, it's really anyone's game. It's really going to come down to the camo and the rail gun, in my opinion. Yeah, it definitely will. We'll see who wins that opening strat as well, who gets the, the nice jumps up the top mid, nice and quick to get that camo. Uh, attention, your fire team is too large. Did you guys boot me? Wait, wait, wait. I'm now Observer. 
We're good. We're doing it again. There we go. Ready to go here. Fathom CTF. Like you said, I'm going to give the edge to No Ice, especially because uh, No Ice seems to be No Ice seems to be pretty objective, efficient so far in this tournament. Uh, the slays didn't go in their favor, but this is a different ballpark here as we jump into Fathom CTF. All right, waiting for the map to load up here. We're gonna we're gonna have to see how these teams are gonna be uh, attempting to play this game type. Like when their flag is pulled, are they looking to OE? Are they looking to vi like make sure that they don't get double capped on? A uh, lot of decisions to make for players, and it's, it's seconds that will separate successful decisions from you were too late um, in order to impact the play you wanted to impact. So it's very important that these decisions are made very quickly and uh, in the right direction, I would say, on a map like Fathom CTF. Now, something we might see off the rip here, we'll see if they decide to contest that railgun. A uh, bit of a dramatic pause here. There we go. Contest the railgun, or if they get an overextender early on to try to get an early flag. But in the meantime, Noble with a flawless jump up the top mid. He wins the camo, and his teammate gets a crucial kill, so he's actually made it out with the camo. For now, at least, he's going to have to back down and stay alive, but that player was hunting him like a shark. Noble's down, but the pressure's on for the... Actually, I take it back. Gold Star has flown through the enemy lines. He's now taken the flag to the bottom mid, and this is what I'm worried about. Those bottom mid strats are so quick, and when Gold Star's got a rail, he can turn back and take it down. Yeah, I want to see the rest of Gold Star's team help him out here because he's opened up the play that can bear, that can capture this first flag, and there it is. The flag goes in, all because Gold Star is willing to take the risk to fly into the base quickly right there. Pull the flag with the rail gun, drop it when it's bottom middle, get the kill, and then secure the cap for the team. Unbelievable job by him to start this game off. And it looks like No Ice picks back up at their objective play. Savvy as ever, quick as ever. Yeah, the, these nice little flanks where they very quickly get into the base while the other team is distracted. These are the most destructing flag runs that we tend to see in Fathom. So you know Gold Star's going to be looking for a couple more of these, but they're aware of his presence, though it doesn't matter. That's three dead. Last guy alive on Red Bridge. Going to try to stay up, but they're going to want to get this defense. Gold Star's ready to defend to make sure they get that flag past the 50-yard line. I think they're successful in that. This might be another flag capture. Gold Star looking to punch it in. Yeah, Gold Star running this one as well. I believe there's nothing that's going to be able to stop him. We see a couple of nades come across the map. They do actually end up killing him. And a bit of a blunder there almost by uh, Brainstorm, but he is able to put that in and get the cap 2-0. They do give up their lives, and is it going to cost the counter cap in return? Does look like Jordan's able to pick up one kill, but he goes down as well. Gold Star able to pick uh -oh. up a kill, and before the flag can get punched in, Gold Star is able to come off spawn. Get a double kill and start the third flag run. This could be a two minute game. Not like this. That's a tragedy of a play right there for all stars. Just denied, just inches away from that capture. And now they're looking to be counter capped on. But I like this defense coming in from all stars fighting for their tournament life here. As they got a player running that flag through bottom mid, the rails up as well. And the camel coming up shortly after. So this is going to be so important to pay attention to. But they got a flag to worry about. We got a lot to worry about here, Wes, at this point in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Pure chaos right now, bottom middle, and it looks like no, every flag is going to be returned. Jordan in, is responsible oh for killing that flag player. It does take him a little bit too long. Loses his life with camo, and that actually gets punched in. All-Stars is able to get a counter cap throughout the chaos and make it a 2-1 game, so the deficit isn't insurmountable at this point. They're able to just play from behind just a little. All-Stars weather the storm. They managed to get a cap and a rail for their troubles. And Roach is putting it to good use here. He'll make his... Oh, I take it back. He will almost die. But he's okay for now. He's got a, a secondary position that works out just as well. There's the kill right there. An opportunity to grab flag and to watch out for both the Albo and the silo spawn. You can see that Albo such a pesky spawn and it's open, but Roach with a huge kill. And now they just got to cut off those silo spawners. Coming in right now, missing the rail, but Gold Star is going to be slowed down. This should actually be a second capture. Absolutely it is. And they're going to tie this game up. With what was once a 2-0 game that looked like it could have wow. ended in the first two minutes has quickly been tied 2-2. Two two. And now it's anyone's ball game. The next flag will win, will take the series, and advance through our losers bracket. Man, All-Star still has fight in them, and it's so great to see that they're not backing down. They've now evened up this game. It's anyone's game at this point. You can see there's so many players in the side, inside a uh, red tree, though, and they will push up, regain control of top mid. The pressure is on from the side of no ice here as Sep Stars and teams looks to, looks to board it. Oof. Rail 
Brainstorm, top mid. This is your opportunity here. You need to control this. The railgun spawning in five seconds. The camo is shortly after. I love the positioning by him, but he does get caught off guard, and from multiple angles, he's taken out without being able to do any damage. Unfortunately for him, though, JK is able to win his one-on-one -on -one front to base because if he loses that, the flag is going to be currently being run. JK, you know Camo's got to be soon. He knows that there's a player over here in tree. Does he know that there's three, though, is the question. Roach is spotted and taken down. Oh. Sapstars is also removed from the map. He loses his teammate top mid, and he's going to be responsible for swooping up this Camo play. A flag is pulled, and underneath him, it is now JK's opportunity to win this game for his team if he makes the right play with this Camo. Yeah, this is huge for JK. They do manage to do it. That's a 3-2 victory on the side of no ice. One hell of a game. A bit of a nail-biter as well. And I got to give a little shout-out to that uh, that TAC pistol, by the way. That's a big reason why JK actually managed to run away with it. He jumped into Blue Treehouse. He was overwhelmed in numbers, but he used the TAC mag, which doesn't show up on radar. And uh, I think that's the reason why he was able to sneak in there, win that fight, get the camo, and secure the win for his team. So no ice. Icing up and, uh, and managing to clutch up, take the series. Yeah, great job by them. But it, I want to say just a big shout out to All Stars for making that such a competitive yeah. series. Wasn't sure uh, how that series was going to go from the start, but it was a bloodbath and an absolute uh, pleasure to watch. Highly competitive teams competing against each other, even this far in the losers bracket. It's something you love to see. Yeah, All Stars definitely imp improving week by week. This is the most fight I think I've seen them put up. So great plays from them. Unfortunately, that will be the end of their tournament life. And that means that no ice is just barely hanging on here. They're only going to go up against better competition as well. So something to watch out for. I'm taking a peek at the scoreboard as well before we go here. We've got a 14 and 9 from Jared. So he's uh, the man who excelled on his team on uh, no ice. But none of the teammates here uh, are a slouch by any means. Pretty good plays from, uh, from All Stars as well. It was relatively even in slays which is uh you know nice to see but ultimately only one team runs, runs away with that victory okay you're waiting for me to close in aren't you uh, i was sorry <laughs> that's okay we're gonna jump into our break we've got more losers bracket coming up very soon so don't go anywhere we'll be right back My caster ready.
Turn their flag. Ten seconds to railgun.
All right, we're back. Esports Arena, Halo 5, 4v4. We're down to four teams left remaining in this tournament. We're on the loser's semifinals. This means it's going to be Liga Del Mal going up against No Ice. Now, No Ice just barely managed to make their way through that series, and Liga is no slouch. They've been playing pretty damn well this entire tournament. They got the upgrade of tapping buttons on their team as well. Clutch, what are you thinking coming into this series? Uh, and let's uh, let's look at the bracket at the same time. We could talk yeah, about that. Um, it's, it's weird because... I didn't think All Stars was going to put up that great of a fight against No Ice, uh, and Liga has looked great so far. Looking at the bracket, though, Team Swindle did just take a game off Liga. Team Swindle having some good players on it. Yeah. Um, it, this is going to be a good series, I think. I think Liga Del Mall probably inches it out and, and takes it. Um, but I think No Ice is playing pretty well still. I think All Stars actually was uh, was playing extremely well as well for that series to go the way it did. Um, but I expect another highly contested series, but in the end, I expect the Liga to have another opportunity to to go against Fung Four. I think that's a fair prediction, uh, though I do think that No Ice is a team of heavy hitters. They could definitely take it themselves, so we'll find out. Uh, of course, that bracket on screen shows you the story. Just a little bit, Love God made their way to grand finals. They're sitting pretty on winner's side, and Fung Four is waiting in loser's finals. So Fung Four fighting from the back foot. We saw them make a reverse sweep uh, in the last tournament, so it's definitely within the realm of possibility, but they've never had a threat like this before. So uh, we got one hell of a tournament on our hands. I just love the fact that the, the skill level continues to improve week by week. We get better players joining the tournament. We get better teams uh, put together. And these teams have now practiced. So they're, they're more on their game. They're not rusty. Uh, so just, just some great stuff to, to look forward to. Apparently we got some replays uh, from Fung 4. Let's, let's take a look at some replays. I like replays. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Funk Four doing it the best. Probably we have a lot of highlights in their replays, right? Yeah. Bubadoo was going to have the flag here on Truth, and I'm not sure if I quite remember this play or what quite happens here. But great job by saying to throw it to his teammate here. Yep, this is the one that ends the game, and that's where game one was taken. And Renegade, we saw his killing spree, and but then we saw these killing sprees answered immediately after yeah. from. Players like Bound, players like Saiyan, I believe, immediately going killing sprees. Nice shot there uh, onto Frosty and taking Frosty out as a huge component of beating this Fung 4 team. And this is going to be Bound also finding Renegade and catching everybody off guard. And that's all because he's able to do that cheeky little jump and take that route yep. that he took in order to get behind the teams that he's able to get these easy shots on these players. Chawei. You're a, you're a proponent of, of, of pushing for these routes and the, everything to be possible from these players. I feel like Bound's one of those players that knows all of the all of the routes in Halo 5 so well and can use them to his yes. advantage so where he doesn't have to necessarily outskill everyone he sees. Bound's definitely one of the players you could compare to Shotzi in the way that he moves. Uh, the, the one thing that I would take away from Bound is he uses the scoreboard version of the spring jump. I'm less of a fan of this one because it's a glitch. But uh, but he still it takes skill to nail it and to uh, to make sure you use it at the right time so you know you're not locked in the scoreboard when you need to shoot someone as well so uh, you know definitely takes skill and you definitely got to give credit uh, credit to uh, bound skill he's been going off in this tournament he was the main reason why uh, you know no ice or sorry what am I saying uh, main reason why no or love God managed to uh, to win winners finals he was a huge disruptor. Uh, and the team, we can see some of that replay still. But the match is about to start. This is a, a Coliseum, CTF. We're about to see, once again, Liga Del Mal up against No Ice. Should be a hell of a series. I'm looking forward to seeing what Tapping Buttons has to do. For his team to get top three, they need to win this series. And I believe that he is the X Factor in doing so. Uh, but JK, having played very well all day, I would say. Every time we've had the opportunity to hop on board with JK, we've seen him just pretty much going off. Um, and he's going to be able to secure these rockets very early on, but he did immediately gets taken down without being able to waste any of them. And with that, Liga Del Mal also gets snipe control. This could be an early cap if the kills go in the way of that throw and drift like they have. Three big kills. Interesting. Uh, drift looks like he's trying to open up the cave here, maybe get like an early kill. But at the same time, Cation blocks. I think actually one player did spawn cave, and that's kind of brutal. I almost feel like he should have just thrown more nades there, make sure he blocked it, because he kind of cut off his teammates and stopped that run from happening. He also gave the sniper over to Blue, so we're going to see what they can do with it. But damn, what an interesting opening play there. Huge miscommunication by all yeah. of Liga Del Mal right there. you got to know where your fly player is running it. If you're going to run a cave, you want to block the cave spawns. You don't want to try and put that spawn trap going on. But enough about that, because Jordan going off with the sniper right now. That's a triple kill, killing spree. And he had to have just come off spawn and ripped five faces off because 
we knew how dangerous of a position no ice was currently in jordan turning that immediately around and giving his team an opportunity to flip this game on its head and get these kills in order to pull this flag unfortunately pelugat has other things in mind yeah, so Liga fumbles that flag cap, and Jared takes full advantage. But the defense is still strong, though Atso does go down. There's a blue player on the cave, and someone trying to run it, but he does get killed. That's JKV looking for the crucial slay, but that's a, a player there to disrupt it. I believe that player is the last one left alive, so if they can take him out... Actually, I think, in fact, that's Pelu on our screen looking to get the defense, uh, though he is unsuccessful. And we have some pressure going on in blue base at the same time, so you know they want that cap, uh, counter cap, and uh, just a, a bit of a double dilemma for this team to worry about. Yeah, Gold Star VR playing his life very well here, but not well enough as Rockets are going to be spawning here in the next few seconds. Great job by Liga Dalmal to get him off of that position. They need to get Rockets in control of their own. And with that, we could see another potential push for this flag, but it does look like JK is once again up there and ready to get these Rockets in control and put them to use this time around. Fire him off, baby. That's a big kill on the elbow, but JK goes down immediately after. So just some good defense for now. Gold Star will push up. I like that jump over to the BR. Nice quick way to get up on the map, but he will get a nice trade. But he's going to be pressured from Snipe. That player, Atso Uchiha, is going to take him down. Not before going down himself. So trades across the board here, but tapping, showing up. The man who joined the roster late, and he's here to improve things. That was currently three dead for no ice. Jordan being the one. Jared being the last guy alive, tapping buttons, trying to pressure these players to spawn caves out of the map, but there's going to be more than one of them, so he needs to watch out here. Uh, and fortunately for him, he's able to trade right there because that was a little bit of an overextension as an understatement. Snipe is going to be coming up, and with it, Drift, his life is taken. JK is able to open up that side of the map for his team to potentially grab this snipe and get control, but Pelu has snuck around. Yeah, I love how Liga always has a counter to the pressure on the base. You got somebody like Pelu who does manage to make his way all the way to blue. He did get the sniper as well, and he's looking to put it to good use. He knows there's a player in red, but he's also got to watch his right-hand side. The second he's going to get punched in the back, at least I'm pretty sure, he, he wants this kill pretty damn badly, though. He's holding the angle, and he does get the body shots. That's a pretty, pretty big way to, uh, to start things off in a double as well before going down. So Pelu making a pretty decent play, and it looks like it's given his team an opportunity to maybe pull a flag of their own. Yeah, but none of his team was able to get the return there, and that's allowed Jared the opportunity to spawn and kind of make his way through bottom middle to get that flag pull. It's going to be a bit of a stalemate here in this situation, both flags being on the other side of the map, and that's a huge wonder by Brainstorm. He's going to fall off the map. JK gets taken down by tapping buttons, and with that two currently dead and the flag being at the base, in this stalemate situation, you are going to need to spawn and immediately help your flag player because Gold Star has also gone down. And that part of the map is like that pit in Star Wars Episode Six, where the you know you just fall in, you get eaten by the monster. Boo Boo died that way too, and and now we have you know players of Liga dropping and falling off the map in the same fashion. In the meantime, Tap Button's going to try to stay alive, but he does go down. We still have our flag standoff, but I see a blue player uh, all the way over in the blue base here looking for the defense. This is his own base, so he should be here. For the Absolutely. Fortunately for No Ice, those kills weren't able to be capitalized upon by Liga Del Mall. Nobody was able to run across the map fast enough in order to find the flag carrier, take him down and get the return. With that being said, they've been able to do that themselves at this point as they tried to make their way across the map. Drift, able to hold on to that flag and get a huge double kill and release some of that pressure and continue to stay alive. Despite the pressure, Drift stays alive. Man has a killing spree as well, and he's a back player holding the flag, so somehow you... Ooh. 